It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Martial Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, March 14th, 2022. Hello again, everyone. I hope you're doing well. It is so great to be here on a lovely Monday afternoon in New York City. Hope you had a lovely weekend. Very busy one in the world of MMA. Almost every major promotion had an event. UFC had an event. Bellator had an event. One Championship had an event. PFL had an event. I'm forgetting a few others. Eagle had an event. There were a bunch. Invicta had an event since the last time we spoke. A lot has happened. A lot to come. Big week, of course. This sort of feels not historic, not nostalgic. It feels very, what's the word I'm looking for? Important that the UFC is returning to London this week for the first time in three years. Last time they were in London was Jorge Masvidal, Darren Till. March of 2019, of course, they were supposed to go March of 2020. That was the first event that was canceled as a result of the pandemic, didn't go last year. So this feels significant. This feels very significant. Uh, is it a sign that it's all over that the pan- No, I'm not gonna get into all of that, but it feels like maybe the beginning of some kind of healing. If, if, if the MMA gods are smiling down upon us and this is their sign that the world is healing, perhaps we can use that sign to uh, to believe that better days are ahead. Looking forward to that. It's a great card with a bunch of UK fighters on it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we will talk about one of the big fights on that card later in the program. And we'll talk about the card as well. But we also have to put this past weekend to bed. UFC's card was amazing on Saturday. Uh, the main card was great. The main event was a little com si com sa. Uh, but the main event, excuse me, the main card was great. Uh, my parlay didn't quite work out. And of course, and I won't say who, but of course, the reason why I don't make picks is because, I mean, without fail, you offend someone. They think you they don't like you or you don't like them. They think that you don't support them. They take it personally. And of course, I heard from people saying, oh, you're picking against me, blah, blah, blah. Terrence McKinney almost pulled it off. And perhaps if they don't stop the action because of his mouthpiece coming out, perhaps he wins. But that was an incredible start. And I don't really think he loses anything as a result of taking that fight on, you know, 10 days notice against a really tough out like Drew Dober. Uh, the Caceres fight just, you know, that was never in in play. We didn't have a chance there. Marais didn't really have a chance there. A tremendous win for Song Yadong. Uh, and how about Khalil Roundtree? That was pretty damn good. That was the only one that I actually won. He was the underdog against Carl Roberson and everyone buzzing about Roundtree, how he looked in the fight, how he finished the fight, what he said in the cage afterwards, what he said at the press conference after the post-fight interview, a real special person, uh, and he will be featured on today's show as well. So let me run down today's lineup, get into some thoughts, and then we'll, uh, we'll get rolling. Laissez le bon temps rouler. As always, today's program is brought to you by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, They are the official sports betting partner of not only the UFC, but of the MMA Hour as well. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today and use code Hour for a special offer when you sign up again. That's code Hour only at DraftKings. Please support them because they support us. GC doing some fun things with uh, DraftKings this week. Of course, March Madness is upon us. And uh, why don't they do, I wonder why they don't do betting for, maybe someone does, for the uh, the NCAA tournament, the wrestling tournament, not the basketball tournament, which uh, it makes no sense that it goes on at the same time. Like, why would they do this at the exact same time as the basketball tournament? Could you not maybe wait a couple of weeks or how about this, do it a week before? I don't know. Why would you do it at the exact same time as the opening weekend of the basketball? It just takes away a lot of the coverage, a lot of the buzz, at least for me. I know there are a lot of people who are wrestling fans who don't even pay attention to basketball, but for someone who wants to pay attention to both, I think it's a little crazy and ill-advised. Alas, I digress. Uh, today's program is going to be a really fun one. A nice mix of characters, a nice mix of personalities, Uh, I'm really looking forward to very, very excited about today's show. So at uh, four o'clock, we'll be joined by our good friend, New York Rick. He is here. He will uh, give us his Rick's picks for the week that was in mixed martial arts. That will be at four o'clock at 3.30. One of my favorites in the game, Chito Vera, the pride of Ecuador. Marlon Vera will join us 
Uh, he, of course, it was announced last week, will return to action on April 30th. April 30th, the big night in fighting. It's going to be Marlon Vera against Rob Font. Important fight at 135 pounds. Of course, also here in New York City, it will be uh, Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano at the Mecca. So I'm very excited about that night of fights. Uh, we'll have Cheeto on to talk about this main event fight. Big opportunity for him. Yes, Rob is coming off a loss, but still one of the very best at 135. And this is part of the uh, the progression for one Marlon Vera as well. So get by Rob Font. I mean, I would think, you know, one other big fight after that. And, and you are in the mix, brother. So looking forward to talking to Cheeto, one of my favorites. Uh, at uh, 3 o'clock, we'll talk to Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker, of course, returning to action this Saturday in the fight that I am most looking forward to. I'm very excited about Tom Aspinall. Very excited. I, I, I think he's a future title contender, if not a future champion. But the matchup of Dan Hooker versus Arnold Allen is just everything that I love. Two great personalities, two great guys. Um, I like them both very much as people, friends of the program, love when they're on the show. Hooker moving down to 45 again, going up against Allen. Allen hasn't fought since uh, April of last year, had that win over Sadiq Youssef, which has aged well over time, especially considering how Sadiq looked this past Saturday against uh, Bruce Leroy. Uh, this is an important fight for both men. Uh, Dan Hooker looking to reinvent himself as a featherweight. Arnold looking to finally get some respect as a featherweight. Anyhow, we'll talk to uh, Dan Hooker uh, about the weight cut, about the decision to move down, all that stuff and more at three o'clock at two 30. We're going to be joined by Paige Van Zandt. Paige Van Zandt was in the news last week. She signed with AEW. Paige Van Zandt is all elite, all elite wrestling. That is, um, is she done with MMA? Is that it? Are we, are we finished with MMA? Uh, what about bare knuckle? Are we going full into pro wrestling? Has she done any pro wrestling training? What's happening over here? Remember, uh, when I was at ESPN, uh, one of the interviews that, uh, I don't know, caused a bit of ruckus was when she and her husband, Austin Vanderford, were in studio and she said that she makes more off her Instagram than she does fighting in the UFC. Oh, that one did not sit well with some people. There was some heat that came with that one. I wonder if that's still the case. We'll find out. 2.30, she'll join us. 2 o'clock, we'll check in with G-City. Uh, we'll get a recap of the weekend that was in terms of his picks, maybe a little preview of the weekend to come, another busy one in MMA. And at 110, we're going to be joined by Cody Law, who's an up and comer, undefeated fighter, training out of ATT, uh, former Penn State wrestler, former Division II All American and champion, uh, who is now undefeated and remained undefeated on Saturday. But my friends, this is a crazy, crazy story. After his win on Saturday, his, uh, his coach, no, sorry, his manager, Abe Kawa, sent me a picture of a piece of paper with some writing on it. And he said, this is what Cody, we have this picture right here. I mean, we could, I could talk about it or we could show it. We have the picture of uh, what Cody wrote in his hotel room. He fought James Adcock on Saturday in St. Louis. And when he got to the hotel, do we not have the picture? Yay, nay. Talk to me, Frank. I'm on an island here. Anyone? Oh, there it is. Uh, so he wrote this down in the hotel room. Law defeats Adcock via KO. Round one, 117. Now, apparently, we, we come to find out that Cody Law, when he gets to the hotel room before his fights... He likes to write down how he thinks it's going to play out. Guys, this is crazy. It says law defeat Adcock via KO round one, 117. Guess how he won the fight on Saturday. He won via KO round one, 117. I repeat, he won via KO round one, 117. The exact same way that he predicted on Tuesday. Now, I say to Abe, this is unbelievable. I don't believe it for a second. You definitely wrote this. You're working me right now. I asked him three times. 
He said, I swear, I swear on everything I love. I swear on my children, he said. Now that's a big one. You swear on your children. I mean, if you're lying about that, you're a scumbag. And I don't think he was lying. Then Mike Brown weighs in. Then Cody Law weighs in. They all said, no, he wrote it. Then they showed me the timestamp of when they took the picture and it was before the fight. And so this is one of the most amazing things that I've ever heard of. And so I wanted to have him on to talk about that, to see how uh, real all this is, how he pulled this off, whether he can predict other things for us, all that and more. So we'll talk to uh, we'll talk to Cody in a matter of moments about all of this. I'm looking forward to talking to Khalil Roundtree. Obviously, he had the big win over Carl uh, Roberson on Saturday, and then he was very emotional afterwards. Uh, emotional in the cage, emotional in the post fight interview. His uh, in, in the post fight press conference, both the post fight interview in the cage and the one um, back where the media is have gone viral. Just beautiful stuff. I tweeted it. Um, it's pretty much everywhere. Talking about life, talking about his emotions, talking about his feelings. A fascinating individual, a uh, a very deep individual, a layered individual. Um, a man who has been through a lot, who has overcome a lot, and is still fighting to overcome a lot. But I think someone that a lot of people can get behind, a lot of people can um, root for him, and he can be a true inspiration for a lot of people. So I can't wait for that. Obviously, Magomed Ankalaev with the the win over Thiago Santos, it didn't really generate the buzz, I think, that people were hoping out of Ankalaev. But I, I still maintain that they should do Ankalaev versus Anthony Smith next. It makes sense. Alexander Rakic is waiting for Jan Bachovic. They're looking to do that fight May 14th. Of course, we have the title fight between Glover Teixeira and Yuri Prochaska on uh, May 7th. No, sorry, that's been moved to July 11th, June 11th, excuse me. It was May 7th. They moved it to June 11th for the Singapore card. Um, and so I think like an Ankalai versus Anthony Smith fight makes a lot of sense for both guys, if you ask me. Um, in any event, we'll get to all of that. Let's go to our first guest. We just talked about him. It's one of the most amazing things. I know a lot of you don't still believe that he did what I'm claiming he did and what he's claiming he did and what his coaches are claiming he did and what his manager is claiming he did. But I believe that Cody Law predicted the not only the, the way in which he was going to win on Saturday, the exact round and the exact time to the second, 117. One of the most amazing things I've ever seen. I needed to talk to him about it. Without further ado, let us say hello to the one and only Cody Law. There he is. Cody, how are you, sir? Good, man. How you doing? I mean, this is quite the setup here. Holy smokes. Is this your house? Yeah. Where are you right now? I'm at one of my uh, one of my sponsors, Axon Sledge. This is their headquarters, and they have a big whiskey bookshelf. I mean, that is just tremendous. Back. I I appreciate this. I appreciate I mean, between like the the turtleneck, the beard, the back, I mean, like you're you're like straight out of a commercial. By the way, uh, I, I want to give you props on your on your your style. I love the suits. I love that you come, you know, ready to go. You look like a true pro. I also love that. And this is, you know, a few guys have done this over the years. You like to get your hands wrapped. I noticed while still wearing at least part of the suit, the shirt, you maybe take off the jacket and the tie, but you're still wearing. Why is that? It's, it's very sort of, with all due respect, like American psycho esque. I like it. It's very Rory McDonald. esque why do you do that? Yeah, I think that's maybe why. I don't know. I think Makes for a good picture. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> I like I like the way I feel when I'm wearing that. You know what I mean? So it's like, might as well keep my stuff on, get my hands wrapped. And then I don't really put my fight stuff on until afterwards. Interesting. So, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. I just kind of did it from the first fight on. Well, it's a good look. Um, and uh, well done. Now I have to ask about this. Okay. So a lot of people don't believe me. They don't believe you. Tell us the whole story here. What happened? When did you write this down? And And I understand that this is something you've been doing for quite some time, right? Yeah, I've been uh, I've been writing stuff down for years. I uh, uh, I used to write stuff down even from my amateur fights. But when I first started fighting for Bellator, I would get to the hotels and they always have a notebook or like a little notepad sitting out with a pen. And I just started writing it down, you know, because I believe in that kind of stuff. And specifically this week, I think Tuesday night, I got to the hotel and they had the little Renaissance tablet out. And I thought I'll just right before bed, I'll write this down real quick. I like to write it down as if it would look in a stat book. If uh, the next day I woke up and I'm reading the results of the fight and and there it is. So I wrote that down and just kind of left it there. And then the day of the fight, I think Abe was hanging out in my room with me. And uh, he asked me, he's like, Yo, what's, what's this? And I told him about it. And I, I guess he took a picture of it right there and then. And I win the fight at minute 17. And here we are. Why do you write 117? Like what drew you to that number? I was going to write 115. And I thought that sounds too generic. Like it was too standard, you know, 115. So yeah. I was like, I'll make it 117. 
just what? off the top of my head. Yeah. Now, now you've done, so you're six and zero oh now. Have you done this for the five prior fights as well? I think so. Yeah. I don't, uh, I think I was close on maybe my fourth fight. I think we have pictures. I know my coaches take pictures sometimes, so I probably have the pictures somewhere, but, uh, I've done them for, I think all, all, all six fights now. But this is the first one, obviously, that was right up the money. Okay, that that was going to be my next question. Have you gotten like somewhat close, like a, a few seconds off, or is this the closest by far that you've ever gotten? Definitely, this is the close. Obviously, this is closest. I think number four, we were, I was pretty close, maybe like thirty seconds off. And and why do you do this? And in what other aspects of your life do you do this? Um. I started doing this specifically like the beginning of 2020. I kind of got back into the whole uh, writing things down that, that you want to happen. And so I started this routine every morning where I would write like three things down every day in a notebook uh, as if they already happened. You know, like I'm reading them, all oh, this already happened. And I started to notice that these things would come true for me. Like a lot of the things I would write down would, would happen. I wrote things down like that I would end up getting a contract from Bellator that I would be, you know, they don't always happen. Like I wrote that I would end 2021, I think um, six and oh, and I only ended at five and oh, but these are things I like to do. And I've been on kind of on a routine with it. And I think that it, obviously it's real. I think it's real. Yeah. So yeah. Now, at what point on Saturday, I'm assuming at some point in the arena, or like at what point you realize you actually nailed this? As soon as I knocked him out and I was running around the cage, <laughs> Abe was cage side and Abe just pointing. There's a, there's a video of Abe and he's pointing at me. He's like, you called it. You called it. And I thought 117. And I started asking people in the cage, what, what was the finish time? And someone said 115. And I thought, well, that's still yeah. awesome. You know, I'll, I'll away. And then I found out as I was walking out, I think Abe yelled at me that it was 117. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. You know, the, the crazy thing to me is like, you're somewhat nonchalant about all this. You freaking predicted it to the second. I mean, when he saw it, I'll be honest, I asked him three times. I'm like, there's no way you just wrote this down. There's no way that he nailed it to the second. And he's like, no, 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 I promise. I swear on my kid's life. I swear on all. And I was like, all right, fine. You're going to go that route. Like, then I believe you. Um, but like, I, I would be, I mean, even at the, I saw at the post fight press conference, you were asked about it. You're just kind of like, yeah, you know, I did it. No big deal. That's insane. Yeah, I think it, it's not like super, obviously this is like, what are the odds? Me and Mike were talking about it, Mike Brown. I said, it's like one in a million. And Mike was like, well, no, this, how many seconds are in a fight? And we broke it down. It was like one in 900 or something. But um, it's happened for me so much that it's not really that crazy to me. You know, wow. I mean, the, the one, the, to the second is crazy. Don't get me wrong. But it's, it's something I've been doing for so long now. And it comes true so often. I was like, yeah, well, of course. You know, your, your story is a great one. You went to Penn State. Um, you wanted to be a champion. You transferred. You ended up becoming a Division II champion. Uh, I believe you were brought to ATT just to, to help Jorge Masvidal prepare for Kamar Usman. You loved it so much. You've stayed ever since, right? And it's been, you know, I, I think it's almost unfair to say this, but I see people talking about like, oh, tough stretch for ATT. You know, Amanda, Dustin, Jorge. Um, but there's a bunch of fighters at ATT that we don't talk about and, and don't give them the credit for victories. But it has been, you know, the high profile fights just last weekend. Jorge, did you feel like, all right, I'm going to do something. I'm going to get spirits up. Mike's in my corner. He was just there last weekend. It was an emotional weekend for the team. I, did, did, you, did you put that kind of pressure on yourself? I put that kind of pressure on myself, but I know what you're talking about. Because I think I saw on Twitter, somebody had tweeted about like, wow, ATT is like going downhill yeah. or something along those lines. And I thought, well, we, we have so many great guys. You're, you can't swim without getting wet, right? Of course, some people are going to lose. We're going to have ups and downs. But uh, I was excited for me, Johnny, and Roman to go fight. I knew we were all going to win, and I thought it would be would be good for the team, you know, to go out there. We, you know, me and Roman had, had good finishes, and Johnny took out the number one guy, uh, right? Salter was number one, so... Mm -hmm. It was fun. I like that stuff. I like to represent ATT. And when we have multiple guys uh, on a card together like that, it's so much fun. There's a lot of young guys like yourself with your background in Bellator right now. Uh, Johnny being another one, Roman as well. Uh, Johnny said some mean things about Gegard that I can't get behind. I mean, he called him old. I mean, how mean is that? Uh, but he is very impressive. I'm just curious, are they treating you well? Are you happy there? Because I know you recently resigned with them. Do you feel like they are treating you well and that this is a good spot for you? I love it, man. I wouldn't want to be anywhere, honestly. It's been... Well, first of all, six fights. I had five fights in 12 months, which is amazing, yeah. right? They gave me five fights in 12 months. And now I just got another fight. Hopefully I fight again in the summertime. Everything I ask for, they, they give me. They give me fights every time I ask. They haven't said no once to my fights. And 
I, I love it there, man. All the people that, that work there, everyone's so nice to me. There hasn't been a single bad experience for me so far. Um, my understanding is you you grew up, you know, you liked combat, you liked fighting, uh, but you were watching UFC 129, George St. Pierre, Jake Shields, and that was the one that made yeah. you think, like, I want to do this, right? Yeah. What about that fight? That was what, like, what was it about that fight that made you want to do this? I think it was the walkout. I don't know. Was that fight in Canada, maybe? Yeah, 55,000. Yeah. It was gigantic. Yeah, the walkout. When George walked out and the crowd was going crazy. I remember. I was a young kid, you know, maybe 14. And I thought, wow, how I, want, I want to do that. That's amazing. I, I want to walk out and have that many people cheering for me someday. And George has always been like my favorite fighter. And because of that moment, I am where I'm at right now. It's interesting because uh, I, I was there for that fight. It was a big deal as a Canadian. It was a big deal for the sport. But he actually got booed at the end of that fight because uh, he hurt his eye and the fight towards the end was a little bit dull. And yet, so it's interesting to me that that's the one that made you want to really do this because it actually wasn't yeah. one of his greatest fights and greatest performances. Yeah, I don't mind. I never George uh, St. Pierre's fights. I, I, I think he was the smartest fighter, you know? And so it's like a gold standard to, to how, how to approach a career, I felt like. So even though the people people boo, but they're not in there. They don't know what it's like. Sure. And I never had a problem with it. Uh, we have a picture of you. Um, it's like one of those uh, fighter portraits. You're, you're shirtless, you're topless. And um, when I read the thing about GSP and then I saw the picture, I was wondering, because yeah. the tattoo on your, your chest is the exact same one that he has, right? Is that because of him? It's not the exact same. It doesn't, okay. it's not the same, the same exact symbols, but yeah. It I looks the it same. You did get it. It's similar. I got it, yeah, because I liked his so much, and he was like my favorite fighter. And uh, I was young too, and I thought oh, this would be really cool. And I don't know, man, I was probably like seventeen years old, eighteen when I got that. Wait, so what does yours mean? Mine means sacrifice. And what does his mean? I don't know exactly what his means. I think his has like a, a kind of a longer meaning. I read somewhere. Okay, but that uh, is one. More. Is that in honor of him? Yeah, it was inspired by his. By his, yeah. And and why did you go with sacrifice? Um, I don't know. For me, I just feel like with what I do at that time, I was a wrestler and in wrestling, like I sac you, you sacrifice so much and still to this day, right. I sacrifice a whole lot to be where I'm at. You know, I don't get to live. I don't get to do all the things that I would maybe want to do. Um, I have to sacrifice a lot of different experiences for other experiences to be, uh, in Bellator, to, to fight for a living, to, to be the best ever. You have to make a lot of sacrifices. So I think it's still one of those tattoos that holds true today for me. Um, the decision to leave, I mean, Penn State is a is a powerhouse, right, when it comes to NCAA wrestling. I'm not an aficionado when it comes to NCAA wrestling, but I know, obviously, Kale Sanderson and all that. That decision, how difficult was that for you? Because I read a quote where you said, like, look, we're going to win as a team. But And I actually give you a lot of credit for this. Uh, you don't hear a lot of people say this. What I read that you said was, I want to win a championship for myself, too, and so I'm going to make this move. Is that accurate? Did you yeah. say that? And And if so, why did you ultimately make that move? and not try to just win as a champion at Penn State? Um, I don't remember when, when or, or exactly what I said. Okay. But, but it's, it's similar, yeah, that's kind of that was kind of the gist of it. Of course, like we were winning titles as a team, but ultimately I, I want to someday be able to say I'm national champion. And it was a tough decision in the moment because my dream was to wrestle at Penn State. And yeah, I was 20, 21 years old. I didn't want to leave. It was hard. How do you tell your coaches you're leaving, your teammates you're leaving? But ultimately, it was the best decision I ever made because I transferred to UPJ, Pitt Johnstown, mm -hmm. Division II, uh, wrestled for Coach Bacora, who's like a father to me now. And uh, obviously, I go on to win a national title. So I got to reach that goal. And I met my coach, Isaac Greeley, who is an All-American for UPJ. Isaac Greeley ends up being my MMA coach when I first start uh, training MMA. Isaac gets me, you know, shows me the ropes of MMA. Through Isaac, I meet um, Malky and Abe. Ah. And Abe, I get brought down to ATT. I get down to ATT. I get into Bellator. Through all these different things, all the way back to my decision leading to transfer into UPJ, I end up where I'm at now with first round with ATT, with Bellator. Um, so it all worked out, you know, wow. best decision ever. Changed the yeah. course of your life. Yeah, dramatically. Because who knows, like what, what, what kind of, where would I have started MMA at if I had stayed at Penn State? I don't know how it would have worked out, but through going to UPJ, I met amazing people, and and now here I am. Like I'm an American top team in Bellator first round. It's, it's amazing. Um, the the writing things down before they happen. I think it was one of your teammates or maybe one of your coaches that wrote me on on Twitter. Is that a Kale Sanderson thing or is that a Penn State thing? 
Yeah, yeah, it was Quentin Wright, I think, who tweeted at you. Okay. Quentin Wright's a what, two-time, three-time NCAA champion. I'm sorry. You see, State I'm such a noob. And, yeah, when I, was, I, I don't mean to like disrespect him. I just know nothing. You would think with all the people like around MMA that are wrestling legends, gods, Daniel Cormier, I just don't, for some reason, I, I never quite, you know, I spend too much time talking about MMA is probably my thing. So I don't mean to insult him. Thank you for saying his name. Yeah, yeah. Quentin was a beast. Um, national champ for Penn State. But he was right. Yeah, at Penn State, Kale and, and the coaching staff did teach us a lot of that kind of stuff. We would draw pictures of ourselves on the podium. We would do these kind of exercises that you wouldn't really think you'd hear a college wrestling team do. But we would. We would we would take pictures of ourselves on a, on a fake podium. We would write goals down, do all kinds of... That's kind of where I really learned about visualization. I got a lot of heat when I tweeted this. I don't know if you saw, like a lot of people called me gullible, an idiot, a, yeah. I mean, like a lot. I took a lot of bullets for you guys on this one, but I believed it. I don't know, something about it. You don't seem like the kind of guy to make this up. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, for having my back there. I actually have it with me because I was like, well, I should probably keep this. So yes. I brought it home with me and oh my this little, <laughs> little notepad, this renaissance on the top of it. Um, yeah, it was one of those things where I seen people being like, ah, oh, this is so fake. But I was like, why would, I, why, would, why would I ever go to the right. lengths of doctoring? I don't even know how to doctor. How would you doctor a photo to make the timestamp right. different? I don't know how that. Well, the, the thing about the timestamp was like, so it said 305 on it from the one that Abe sent me. And they're like, oh, you can yeah. just change your clock to Pacific time zone, which would then be uh, 60, oh, sorry, it would make us 605, but you didn't fight to like 630. So even with that, it would have been before. Yeah. People are just... Yeah. Also, and then I also tweeted to you, I tweeted you a different screenshot of a timestamp. Isaac, that coach yes. I was just talking about, in my room the night before and took a picture. So I tweeted you one that, was, yes. that said 10.06 yesterday. Yes, 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 yes. Also, Abe, when did Abe send you the photo of that? Right after I fought, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what did people think? Abe was sitting in the crowd with a renaissance <laughs> book waiting to write this down as soon as I, whatever time I finished. Golly. It's crazy. What are you going to do with that? I don't know. I guess I'm in Pennsylvania right now. Um, my like my family home is here, so I always come home to Pennsylvania. Probably leave it in my room. Yeah, man. And I'm um, I'm assuming yeah. you're gonna keep this going. Yeah, always, yeah. always. I love. Wouldn't it. Wouldn't it be crazy if I did it twice? Oh my god. Yeah. Well, now every time, the thing is, we need it before your fights. Now, like we need just mm. just to avoid all this. I think you, does that ruin it if you tweet it out? Uh, if you share it with the world, yeah, does that ruin it? Okay. Is there a way? Is there be a way to take a video of like, I don't know, take Dude, a video and really next one. You text it to me. I will keep it, and then I will have it approved. Okay. I'll start texting you them every fight. Thank you. I appreciate that. And so we're hoping to come back in the summer. Yeah, I would like to fight in June. I think you know we'll, we'll see, but that gives me April and May, like maybe take a week or two here to recover a little bit, and then start training again. When I'm an ATT, I'm basically in camp. You know, right. if you're at ATT, you're training for a fight. So at any point, they could call me and say, hey, you know, you want to fight in four or five weeks? Yeah, let's do it. Maybe I could fight four times this year. Well, this is incredible. Um, both Malky and Abe have been talking about you a lot um, and obviously have been watching your fights in Bellator. To hit this is just unbelievable. Congratulations, my man. Uh, you're, you're undefeated. You're, I mean, you're finishing everyone except for that one dude early on. But I mean, all the fights, you're not fighting like a wrestler, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, you are knocking people out. It's very impressive. So keep it up. I wish you nothing but the best continued success to you. And I hope you nail the next one and maybe buy a, a lottery ticket or something this week and see how far this can extend. Yeah, we'll see. Thanks for having me on, man. This is an honor. It's really, uh, it's pretty cool to be on here. So oh, my pleasure. be on again when I do this. Deal. It is a deal, my friend. All the best to you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Errol. All right, there he is, Cody Law. Unbelievable story. If you don't believe him, you're just a jackass at this point. Believe the guy. That is great stuff. Um, I want to play this clip. Khalil Roundtree is going to join us next, uh, and I reference this. So let's play it. This is Khalil Roundtree. He won on Saturday. He beat Carl Roberson. It was an incredible finish. Connor gave him props. He kicked him right in the chest. It was amazing. You don't often see that when the opponent is down. He was emotional in the cage, and then he was very emotional after where, where the fighters meet the press. And this is the clip that has kind of gone viral, if you will, and uh, will give you, you know, a bit of a taste of what's to come and who this man is and what he's all about. So this is Khalil Roundtree Saturday night after his win over Carl Roberson. Hey, Khalil. <clears throat> Alex, what's up? Um, I just have one, one, one question for you, man. Um, for the next Khalil that's maybe sitting on his couch right now, a little bit overweight, um, 
What's your message to them? Hmm. It might sound a bit cliche or we've heard this before, but like your life matters. (sighs) (sighs) Your life matters. You can be special. You can be strong. You can be seen. You can be heard. Life is beautiful. If you make it that way, It doesn't have to be how everybody else makes it seem. Stick around. (laughs) Stick around another day. I would have a lot of, a lot of things like that to say, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Incredible stuff there. Uh, We have talked to Khalil a few times on this show, the ESPN show. Just one of the, I mean, I can't claim that I know him personally. We are not friends, so to speak, but just seems like truly one of the uh, most special people in this sport. Um, The way he expresses himself, what he represents, uh, his story, the inspiration that he is. uh, He is the best that MMA has to offer. Damn good fighter too. But when you have a man like that, expressing himself like that, how could you not root for him? How could you not call him an inspiration? How could you not want to talk to him? And so it is a great honor to have Khalil Roundtree on the program after his big win on Saturday. Let's go to the Zoom machine and say hello to the man who was victorious this past Saturday. Khalil, my man, how are you? I'm doing well, Ariel. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me on today. Oh, it is. uh, I'm so I'm, I'm probably most excited to talk to you today just because of everything that, uh, you have said over the past week what you represent. First off, congratulations on the win. Incredible stuff. Um, I'm curious, what has the last, you know, 36 or so hours been like for you? Because it seems like, you know, the the fight itself could have gone everywhere and you could have gotten mad props. Right? Connor's tweeting about you, giving you props. But it seems like, you know, everyone's talking about what you said afterwards. Has it been overwhelming to see the love that you have received? Uh overwhelming yes um in a really good way i've i don't think i've ever received this much feedback um post fight and let alone like this much just positive feedback um you know just just endless messages still just flowing in of of people just expressing gratitude and just so, so many things, man. It's like, I, I haven't really been able to sleep much just because I've been thinking about the, like what, what could possibly come from all of this and like the, the type of change that can really be made, um, you know, on a, on a very big scale. So yeah, it's, it's been great though. It's, it's, it's been really great. Did you, I was wondering, I asked, actually asked a friend of mine, um, if, if I was blocked on your Instagram, because I saw people uh, tagging you and the Instagram wasn't there for me. Did you disable your Instagram? Because I was like, oh man, I hope I'm not blocked. But I, I kept seeing people tag you and it was leading to nothing. Yeah, so I I think ne- like currently I only allow tags from people who I follow. And also there was a point within my career, maybe like a year and a half ago or something like that, where I just blocked as many MMA media outlets as I could. Oh, okay. So I am blocked. Maybe, maybe you are. (laughs) Um, And it's, it was, I think just to speak on that a little bit, um, you know, just being, you know, yes, I'm, I'm a UFC fighter and an, and an athlete, but just, 
being tagged in MMA media that I just don't want to hear about or don't care about, or even just like using my phone and just going to my explore page and just seeing other fighters be talked about a certain way, or, you know, just, I just, I'm, I haven't been, you know, a, a big fan of MMA media for a really, really long time. And um, I just had gotten to this point emotionally where I just really didn't want to be associated with a lot of it. Um, just due to a lot of frustration, I didn't really know how to handle it, but to block it out. You know, most people say, oh, you got to block it out. But I yeah. like physically blocked it, <laughs> blocked it all out. So Consi I'll definitely. No, no, please do whatever works for you. Considering that I'm, I'm actually super uh, happy that you came on the show because I, you know, wouldn't have been surprised had I known that that you'd have just told me to like take a hike. So thank you again for coming on. Uh, could I ask like what about all of that bothered you? Why did you want to block it out? Why did you feel like you needed to block that out? Um, I think it it has a good like a a good amount to do with you know my post fight speech and just how I said like you know I just I've I'm I'm at a point now where. I just feel like I, I'm ready to open up about just who I am and what I've gone through for for the other for other people because you know maybe there's other people that you know that my story and stuff can inspire you know mm -hmm. um, and um, I I felt like any time I would fight and win then that's when people want to speak to me and that's when people want to ask me questions and still the like you know MMA media would want to ask me questions but still it was questions along the lines of like well, who do you want to fight next or right. this and I'm like all of that stuff is cool but like for me personally and how I even got into MMA it's so far off from you know so far off from like my real mission you know and and a lot of the conversations are about like oh you know who do you want to fight next or champion or do you see yourself at top 10 and who's the best striker and this and that and and to me a lot of that stuff really doesn't matter it's not like in my brain on a day-to-day -day basis so I think um, I think just with time and and life and maturity, I have finally come to a point where I realize like, hey, I, I have to take control over the things that I want to speak about and the things that I want to do, whether I'm winning or losing, whether I'm a champion or not. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to be able to, um, you know, expand my outreach as much as I can um, before it's all over, you know, before all the fighting stuff is over. I appreciate you saying that because uh, I was watching your pre-fight press conference on Wednesday and I couldn't tell if you were annoyed at the questions or in a bad mood or something like that, but it definitely felt like you didn't, I don't know, like you didn't want to talk about that. You, you know what I'm saying? Is that an accurate portrayal? Like I felt like you, uh, like you were taking like, a, I think I've, uh, you know, been doing this long enough to where I feel like I could read someone if they want to talk or don't want to talk. And then you were like pausing and thinking and it felt like you wanted to say something else, but you were just kind of, what, what, is that pretty much why? Because it was the wrong questions being asked of you? In a way, I, I'm, I'm doing my best to try to develop into the best you know, UFC fighter and MMA athlete I can be. And I know that one of those things right now is, you know, I, I've got to be able to promote a fight, right? And and that's just something for me that in my entire life, I had never been good at doing. I didn't really get into my first like one-on-one -on -one fist fight until I stepped into a cage. Everything else was kind of, you know, like just kind of small, mediocre, like street brawls or stuff at, you know, hardcore shows or things like that. But um, I'd never really been a person that was out, you know, happy to fight. If I ever had to fight someone, it was always like, oh, I don't want to do this, you know. So I'm, I'm getting better at embracing the part that I, I realize that I have to promote fights moving forward. But the truth and honesty to who I am is, I really don't like pre-fight interviews. I don't like to say, oh, this is what I see in this guy and I'm going to do this and that and and really kind of like dish out my entire game plan and focus 
before the fight even happens because I also want to be able to maintain my integrity, right? So I don't want to go into a pre-fight interview talking about all of the things that I'm going to do and how confident I am and then go get smashed and then not get a chance to get a post-fight interview to talk about what I learned, <laughs> you know what I mean? And and so like, it's, it's just really being able to, um, yes, I was uncomfortable. And a lot of the times for pre-fight interviews, I am uncomfortable because I don't want to talk about the fight. It's already going to happen. And I just want to do what I plan to do and, um, and just keep moving forward. Post-fight interviews are great. I'm willing to share everything that I learned or that I went through or that I prepared for. Um, but yeah, just the, the pre-fight interviews to me, they just, they, they kind of bug me more than they, than they hype me up. If someone were to ask you, who is Khalil Roundtree Jr., what's your response? Hmm. Khalil Roundtree Jr., wow. <laughs> um, I'd say I'm a free, honest, authentic leader. <laughs> That's, you know, at the end of the day, those are the three things that I, that I stay true to is just maintaining my freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of individuality, uh, freedom of thought, uh, approach in life. Uh, I do everything that I can to be as honest as I can with, you know, with my words, with my actions. And I really try to remain authentic as much as I can too, and, and really not change up who I am, where I come from, um, the things that I'm interested in, uh, how I dress, what music I listen to. So, and leader, as far as just wanting to really help, you know, help people, um, or just continue to like, just be an inspiration or lead by example, you know, I don't have anything figured out. I can't tell people exactly what to do, but I I do want to make sure that you know my actions and how I how I live this life um, are are you know I, I live by example and and hopefully give someone a um, some type of you know vision of of what could be for them. Have you always been this way? Um. I can't say that I've always been this way, um, but my father, who I always honor, especially in this in this fighting stuff, um, uh, he all of the stories that I heard of him were nothing but great as far as how many people he helped. And someone's like, "Oh, you know, your dad helped me get this job, or your dad, you know, took me how taught me how to." you know, get my first suit and your dad did this and that. And so like my father was someone who was for his people so much so that like when he passed away, they renamed the street that he grew up on after him. And there was like a huge, you know, ceremony and motorcade and, and things like that. So to be a child and to know that, you know, to find out that my father was murdered and kind of taken from us, um, was was really heavy and my thing was always to just try to make him proud and live a life to where he would be proud of me and 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 the things that I do because you know I th I feel like a lot of fathers that have sons would love for their sons to be you know an elevated version of them and so I, I really tried to consciously live that where is that street uh, it's in New Jersey. I don't know if they still have, I don't know if it's still named after him, but I do have, um, I do have photographs, um, from the day that he passed away and the day that they changed the sign. Wow. Um, and I do have the sign still as well. Wow. Um, New Jersey. We we've talked in the past about your father and your story is so incredible. You know, the sport is growing so much. I'm, I'm assuming there are some people who don't even know about who your father was and, and what happened to him. Um, is it important for you to keep reminding people, by the way, have they, have they, did they ever find who, who killed your father? Was that person ever captured? Hey, they found them like immediately. Uh, but there was a, a bit of controversy because, um, just with, with the trial and things like that, but they did find the guys. And, um, I think 
they didn't do more than, you know, five or six years in prison for it. Wow. And like, if they're still out there now, I mean, they're, you know, if they're still alive, that they're, they're out there and they're free somewhere. Um, and so, you know, another part of my motivation, knowing that they could potentially still be alive there is like, <laughs> you didn't like, you know, you might've taken him, but you didn't, you didn't kill the name and you didn't kill what we're about and the mission that we've been on, you know, since, since he started. And yeah. How, how different of a person do you think you would be if that didn't happen? I'm assuming you've thought of this. Um, this completely changes the way you are, the way you think, the way you try to change and evolve as a human being. How different do you think you would be? Do you think you wouldn't even be a fighter if, if that never happened? I highly doubt that I would have been a fighter. Um, my thing growing up, when I would wake up, we had, uh, we had like platinum and gold records in the, uh, in the house that were given and dedicated to my dad before he even passed. So like boys to men, you know, Motown Philly, triple platinum, you know, things. And it had my dad's name on it. And, you know, I would walk down the hallways and look at it and, and always think, you know, I'm going to be in the music industry. That's how I'm going to, you know, follow in my dad's footsteps. And so uh, when I was probably eight years old, seven years old is when I started asking my mom, for instruments and every Christmas I would say like, I want a drum set this Christmas. I just want a guitar this Christmas. I just want a keyboard. And I would teach myself, I would lock myself in my room and teach myself how to play, you know, my favorite songs. And so my dream was always to be a musician. And so I think if my father were still around, um, that, that probably would have been more of my, uh, more of the route that I would have taken, like music producer or A and R or something that has to do with uh, working with with the entertainment business. Because still to this day, um, I'm completely. I love it. I love the entertainment industry. I love the music industry. Um, yeah. So it probably would have been something around there, which is something that I'm still. I would still love to do. You know, on while while I fight or post fighting. Um, yeah. Is, is your mother alive and well? Yeah, my mother is alive. Um, um, she's, she's well, but I'm, I feel like, you know, I'm 32 now. My mom, I think is 60. Um, and I'm just, I'm at that point in life right now where, you know, um, like father time starting to kick in. Right. So my mother's health is, is, it's not the best right now. And, that was a, a big motivation uh, for this fight too, is just, I have to see my mother in constant pain every day. And um, I still I still support my mother because she supported my entire family by herself um, for this long, working multiple jobs to, to raise four children and, uh, and just keep us alive. So now is, is my time where um, I feel like it's just time to take the reins and, and kind of help her out so that she can live out the rest of her life happily. So um, my mother is alive and she is, she is well, but her health is not the best right now. And so that's a big part of my focus right now too, is how can I, uh, you know, help restore my mother's health so that I can keep her around for as long as possible. Just curious, have you heard from her since your fight? And if so, how does she react? You know, I think uh, parents, uh, I could say we, I'm a, I'm a parent as well. Like you, you never want to see your kid emotional. You never want to see them hurting, crying, even though you may not be hurting, but like, you know, you, you are not afraid to share your emotions. Um, does she comment on that? And if so, what does she say? Uh, I had a talk with my mom uh, a couple, like a few days ago. And prior to this fight, my mom did not like to watch me fight. She would never watch live. She'd been to one fight. Um, the ultimate fighter finale when, when I fought Andrew Sanchez and she was there and that's when, I don't know if you've seen the clip, but I was like screaming at her like, mom, shut up because she was, she was hysterically crying and like, Oh, please get up. No, you know, and I could see her because she was for some, some reason she was front row, like right by where the, the inspectors like grease us down. So she, um, she supports that I fight and she supports, you know, the the change that that it's brought to my life 
but she was never someone who would watch it live. But I talked to her a few, a few days before the fight. And she had said to me with full confidence, she's like, I have, I'm so confident in you for this one. I've never seen you be so focused and I've never seen you lock in so much. And she's like, for the first time in my life, like I'm going to watch your fight live and I'll be right there supporting. And it brought me to tears because like, that's just, that's just huge for someone like my mom. So um, yeah, I, I have a fantastic relationship with her. She's the strongest, most compassionate woman I know. And she's, you know, she'll be on her way over here shortly to, to hang out and just kind of give me her thoughts. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about everything that's happening. But um, like I, I said on Instagram, you know, this, this fight and was, was definitely dedicated to the both of my parents for just everything that they did and the foundation that they set to, to make me who I am. And I feel, I felt like it was time for me to embrace everything that they've seen in me and that I maybe didn't see in myself. And it was just time to just embrace it and trust it and, and put it all to work. And that was the result that we had gotten. You have mentioned, and you mentioned uh, in, in the post-fight press conference as well, not that long ago, you were 300 pounds. Uh, you were smoking. You were not eating well, obviously. You were addicted to all kinds of vices. How long ago was that? Uh, so that was 12 years ago. So at the, I'd say at the height of my just depression and like downward spiral, I was 19. That was like I was out of high school. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to go go to college because I just my whole life I never really I had friends and I had really good friends, but it wasn't like school wasn't ever really like a thing where I went and felt like oh this is you know my all, everyone's here it's gonna be good you know most of my friends we didn't really like school we skateboarded and like you know listened to punk rock and you know used to ask people outside the store to like buy cigarettes for us and you know like that type of stuff um but uh about 19 is when just everything kind of hit me people were going to college some people were getting jobs and you know i was living in a one-bedroom apartment with my mom my brother my niece my sister uh struggling to make 750 dollars rent meet every month and I had no idea of what I wanted to be in life or what I wanted to do or what I could even do because at the time, 19 years old, 305 pounds, two packs of cigarettes a day, soda only, you know, you know, if someone had pills, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll take some, not even knowing what they are, you know, just, just really just lost and with no hope or no, no, you know, I never didn't even care. I like I don't care if I wake up today. I don't, you know, I'm going to drink myself and hope that I don't wake up tomorrow. You know, like like those type of thoughts until um you know, I my brother was watching MMA. I saw a little bit about what that was and kind of a, a, attached to this this aggression and and kind of anger that it seemed like these guys had, especially after seeing Rampage rip down a door on the Ultimate Fighter. I'm like, yeah that's what I want to do. You know, I was like, yeah, I want to do that. You mean if I do train MMA, I can just break a door down with my bare hands. Absolutely. So, um, it was just, it was a mixture of like, you know, being exposed to MMA and then just feeling like I just wanted to just like explode or give up. And yeah, that was, that was at 19. And that's when, that's when I just decided I'm, I'm going to start. One of the things that you said in that clip that I think resonated with a lot of people is, you know, you matter, you know, keep living, it will get better, all that. Did you not feel like you mattered? Did you not feel like it was going to get better? No, I, I think a, a big portion of that was um, when, when I was, I was born in Los Angeles and uh when I was five, we moved to Las Vegas and my mom used everything that she could to move us to, you know, kind of the best neighborhood, you know, with, with, with better schools and it was kind of a sub suburb area. And, um, I was new and in school, I, I was always, a, like I said, a music guy, 
Um, I remember one of the days of school, like I wore an NSYNC t-shirt and like no guys ever wore NSYNC, NSYNC t-shirts, you know, no black kids either. So um, I remember like I had gotten made fun of for it pretty heavily, even like just walking home from school. I remember just like a crowd of kids just kind of like following me, kind of laughing at me. And then uh, that's kind of like when a lot of my like self-loathing <laughs> kind of started to kick in, you know, and um, just a, a mixture of who I always wanted to be in life. You know, this kind kind of like happy guy, smiley, just want to be friends with everybody. Uh, I never like I, I didn't really feel like that was accepted. And I felt like I was always supposed to be this like because I was bigger, this like bully or, you know, just this guy who I really wasn't, I was always expected to be something different or an athlete. So uh, I just, I just kind of lived my life feeling overlooked or like people really never saw me for who I am or who I wanted to be. And it was always like these labels that were kind of placed on me. And um, yeah, I think, it, I think that was just a, a lot of it is just really feeling unseen even though I had people who loved me and people who championed me, uh, there was always that portion of, of me inside that just felt like unseen. Like it didn't really matter because no one really cared to know who I am internally or nobody really cared about the, the soft and sweet things that, that I cared about at the time, you know? Yeah. Um, and so like the, the process, you know, you like, you talk about it, but people don't realize just how tough, you know, being 300 pounds and not being an athlete at the time, I would imagine that first step just to go to the gym and you're self-conscious, right? You you probably are thinking like, God, you know, people are going to look at me, laugh at me, judge me. That first step it might be the most difficult step of them all, I would imagine. Do you recall that first day in the gym, those first couple times in the gym and how you felt sort of, you know, I would imagine out of shape, you, you don't have good cardio, things like that. How difficult was that? And how did you keep going? Like feeling down, what made, cause I could imagine a lot of people do it once, twice, and then quit cause they don't think they're good enough to keep going. How did you keep going? Um, yeah, I remember, I remember walking in. So we, we did a, a quick search to see what gyms were in town. And, um, we saw that Vanderlei Silva's gym was here and that was like, right when he had built it. And so, um, my brother and I, we looked up Vanderlei Silva online and we saw his videos and I'm like, this guy <laughs> is sick. You yeah. know, like, you know, this guy is crazy. Yeah. Let's go to his gym. If he's going to teach us like how to fight like that, let's go. And so, um, when, uh, when we walked in, I just remember feeling this immediate like intimidation because there's photos of him. He's like oh, yeah. screaming pictures of him, like, covered in blood and acts, uh, you know, shout out to Eric Williams for those photos now that I know who took them. Um, so yeah, I remember being very, very, uh, in intimidated. And then the first class was a, a Muay Thai class that was led by, um, an instructor named Michael Costa. And he is the, one of the hardest trainers that I've ever known in my life. But the cool thing about it is that he definitely taught from the heart and he cared about every single last one of his students. And so I went and I made sure that I just gave my best efforts and listened to what he was saying because I knew that I wanted to learn how to fight like Vanderlei Silva. And uh, I remember after the class, I was just completely gassed out and he came up to me and he's like, Hey, have you done this before? And I said, no, never. This is my first time. And he's like, I think you're, I think you have, you know, like a, a natural ability a natural talent. He's like, you should, you should come again. Our next class is mm. tomorrow at, you know, 11 o'clock. Um, come back. I want to see you in my class. And that was the first time that I felt like I had had this like open door acceptance, like from, from a kind person who actually wanted to, to teach me how to fight. And I think what kept, what kept me going there was just, you know, this guy really wanted to teach me how to fight and really to, to make me help me be a better person. And I remember that was the day that I got home and I threw out my packs of cigarettes and, you know, just, I was like, if I, I can't smoke, if I'm going to be doing this, cause it's just, it's so much on my lungs and I can't breathe. And, um, 
that was that was just the start of it and then everything else i just started to add a little bit more every every day to the best of your knowledge um recollection how long does it take for the weight to come off the confidence to grow the feeling of acceptance to become really real like what's that process how long does that take months years for me personally i lost 100 pounds in 11 months wow and from that, from the first time that I did MMA or did did that Muay Thai class, um, every day was like I would get rid of something, something that I knew wasn't good for me. First day was cigarettes, the next day it was you know soda, and then I was like, okay, I'm not eating fast food anymore. I'm going to just eat like vegetables and eggs and protein, and then I started feeling better already from just eliminating those things. Then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to start jogging a little bit. And then I start jogging. So I think the confidence started to come after about like, like three months, I could say, you know, like three months of, of just going to training and just telling myself that, you know, today is the day, like, or today I'm not going to smoke. That, that was the thing. Those vices were all obviously wanting to like creep back in. But I had to take it day by day and just say, you know what, today I'm not going to do it. And I wake up the next day, today I'm not going to do it. And and the same thing with training. Today I'm going to go. Today I'm going to go. And just taking everything day by day until, yeah, about three months down the line, I saw my face slimming up a bit. And I was like, oh, my God. And people were finally saying, like, are you working out? Are you, you know, like I started to get a little bit of, of – uh, you know, acknowledgement for, you know, for losing weight and stuff. And that just took it through the roof. And then I told my coach, I want to fight. And he's like, okay, you have to lose a hundred pounds. And I'm like, ah, how do I do that? I just elevated everything that I was doing. So I just started running more. Um, I actually turned off my cell phone. I, I just told my friends, Hey, I won't have a phone for the next couple of months, shut it off. Wow. And I just did my life to, um, to losing the weight and, and, to working out and to really just trying to create this better version of myself. Have you ever talked to a therapist? Um, yeah, I, I've, I've talked to, um, I've talked to a few people who are therapists and I've spoken to, yeah, I, I have, um, not regularly, but it is something that I would, I would love to do, um, you know, moving forward. But I just, I haven't been able to really like afford it with all of the other things that I have going on, you know? I was just curious because you, you talk about depression and things like that. I talked to one uh, and I only started yeah. uh, a year ago and it helped me tremendously in a tough time. I for therapy, man. <laughs> My girlfriend, uh, I think you know Mia, yeah, yeah. she's, her and I together, but her, I, I'm going to take myself out of it. Um, yeah, she opened my mind up to so many things and just even just being able to, you know, be open and speak about mental health. I am a huge advocate for therapy for men getting therapy for women getting to anybody. I, th I think that it's a fantastic thing. I think we all need a space to, to talk. <laughs> Do you consider yourself a confident person? Um, you know, I can say yes, right? Like I can say yes. There are times that I do feel confident, but I think that I'm more of the guy who is working on building confidence rather than confidence being right at the forefront. I'm more of the guy who I'm a bit more like reserved and hesitant and it takes a little bit of encouragement for me to actually step into my confidence. One thing that you said uh, on Saturday, another thing that you said was uh, that you want to inspire change. Uh, you want to be heard. You want to be seen. You want to inspire change. How do you want to inspire change? And, and what do you want to change? So for the past, you know, I, I also mentioned something about like my story, right? Yeah, yeah. And my story, my personal story, yes, I would love to continue to share. But for the past couple of years, I've been writing a story. Um, like literally writing it. Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's, it, it has a lot to do with my own personal story, but Ariel, you, you have children. Yes. Three boy, boys, uh, girls? two boys and a girl. 
uh, your boys, do they like, uh, who would you say are like their three favorite superheroes? Oh my, uh, you know, like the classics, uh, they like, uh, Iron Man, Spider-Man, um, and there's a bunch of, uh, like new dudes now that I don't like, they watch Avatar. I don't know anything about this stuff. Now everyone's going to make fun of me, but you know, stuff like that. It's okay. I asked you that because when I was a young boy, I had no superhero that I could look up to and say, Hey, that guy looks like me. Mm. I want to be Halloween or I want to, you know, yeah. I want to, you know, I didn't have that. And so I knew that I never wanted to be an athlete really growing up. Like I never, I didn't think like, oh, I want to be a football player. I want to be a basketball player because everybody that looked like me that were kind of considered superheroes like Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal, they played basketball, didn't want to play that. Um, and so the story that I've been working on is, is a, a, a character version of myself, but like, it's not really me, but it's something that resembles me, but with, with like a similar story. So things that I've been through, I've characterized them thoughts and, and personal, let's say like demons for lack of better words. Um, I've characterized them into like villains where this character fights these things and it's a very like internal. So it's more of like a comic graphic novel type of story to where there's room for my imagination to also go into it and, 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 um, and kind of tell the stories from how I see them. Cause I'm a very like internal, more visual guy. So yeah, I've been working on more of like a gra graphic novel type of story that I think will inspire change in a lot of people and a lot of men that look like me and a lot of children that look like me who kind of need something like that. And I think that with, you know, with the right people that have a similar mindset and a similar, you know, that connect to it, I think that something like this could, could be a huge change, a huge change. Have you shown it to people yet or you're not quite there yet? I've written, I've, I've put together pitch deck and, um, I, with the help of, you know, my, my management, my agency, um, we've pitched it, but I think when I pitched it, it was a bit premature. And so now I'm at a point right now where I know that I'm no writer. Um, the writing is not bad and the, you know, the, the, the pitch deck and stuff is not bad, but I do know that like with people who would love to be a part of a project like this, it could be huge. <laughs> it could be huge, man, because I, it's something that I'm like, I'm definitely passionate about. And um, I would love to be able to, yeah, like I said, tell my story in a more dramatic uh, visual type of way that, that multiple people can, can connect to. And um, yeah, I would, we'll have to connect, you know, personally to, so I can give you more details, but um, yeah, I, I definitely want to be able to, to make a change in, in, in that type of way as well. Uh, in the post-fight interview with Paul Felder, you were emotional. Um, in the post-fight press conference, you were emotional. I like this. I'm an emotional guy. People make fun of me that I've cried on the air and whatnot. I don't mind. I've always been that kind of guy. Uh, so this draws me to people like you. Are you always like that? Or is it the fight that brings these, these emotions out in you? And then it kind of subsides a few days later. I think I'm, I'm, I've always been like an empathetic type of guy, right? Like I, I'm always aware of other people's feelings and the people around me. And I pick up the, like the energy of the room. Right. And uh, I think it's more of just the fight that brings out that, like that burst of, you know, like just tears, just thinking about everything that I had gone through in camp and just, you know, doubts and struggles and having to wake up and do this. And I think it was just, it all just built up to where I just, I don't mind letting it out either. If it, if that's what wants to come out, that's what comes out. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold it back just because someone else's opinion. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I'd say I'm pretty emotional. I'm a sensitive guy. Um, and, uh, you know, but yeah, I don't think it's not that I like cry a lot, but if it, if it means a lot, then yeah, the like, you know, tears and stuff will, will definitely come out and I'm not afraid of that. How do you, how do you 
just curious, and I'll, just a couple more questions, and I'll let you go. Thank you for the time. How do you get over like the ups and downs? How do you get over the downs, um, the 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 bad days? What do you do to get over those days? To get you to go get out of bed, go train, go fight. What is your method to getting over those bad days? Well, the first thing is vision, right? I I I. I do my best to keep the vision alive and I try to think and see why am I doing all of this? What is it for? Do you know what I mean? So the vision ahead, what does the life that I dream of look like and what type of person is that? And how do I look and what's, am I smiling? You know, so it's, it's vision. But I think recently one of the things that helps me the most, and it's something that my coach, um, my coach Lorenzo tells me, and it, it, it helps me and strengthens me. It's, he says, stop feeling sorry for yourself. And I think that that's something that some people could take the wrong way, but for me, it actually helps. You know, if I, if, if, if I know that I have three training sessions in a day and my body is, you know, sore and I don't have motivation, and I tell myself like, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Just go do it then, then, you know, if I attack the day, no matter how I'm feeling without feeling sorry for myself or giving myself excuses, then at the end of the day, I feel so much better because I still went, I, you know, like I defeated all of those things, like all the odds that were stacked against me, you know, in a way like sore body, you know, this person called me, they're sick you know, this bill, that, and da, 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 da. And I still went and got all of my stuff done at a hundred percent effort. When I go to bed at night, I'm like, hell yeah. Mm. And then the next day, maybe I feel better. Maybe the motivation is there, but on the, on the hard days, on the down days, I tell myself, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Work, work hard, <laughs> work hard, you know, keep going, work hard. That's it. Every day, we just work hard every day, work hard. Uh, you're on a roll now. You've looked fantastic in your last two fights. I did read recently, though, that when you were living in Thailand, and correct me if I misinterpreted this, like you were starting to lose that passion for being a fighter. Like you were almost too comfortable there. It was too, I mean, it's paradise there, but you were you were losing that. Why were you losing it? And if you didn't leave Thailand, do you think that this version of you doesn't come out in the cage? Do you never get it back? Uh, so... I don't want to say that I was too comfortable. I was very comfortable there. Um, but it was more about my surroundings and, and just seeing people, you know, selling, you know, 50 cent cups of coffee every single day on the street, just happy to the core and seeing kids outside, you know, just like, playing, you know, football in the streets or just running around and no shoes, no care in the world. But everybody, majority of people that I saw just always maintain this smile and this grace and just this like, just happy to be alive, happy to be around their just their fellow people. It was very like tribal being in Thailand. And so I started to, you know, question myself in a way of like, why am I striving for so many like just extreme things? Why do I want a big house and $50 million and, and, you know, and, and all of these things when I could literally just have happiness with people that I love around me, especially in Thailand, I thought I was going to live there for the rest of my life. And I loved it. I loved everything about the culture and the people. So I had just gotten to a point where I was like, you know, with what I have now, I could do something small, or even if I just worked in a coffee shop or I did this, or I drove a tuk-tuk and just drove people from, you know, place to place, I could still be so happy. Like I don't need a, a bunch of things to, you know, to get this happiness that I think that I'm working for. So it was more along the end. I was like, you know, if I don't fight in the, if I don't fight in the UFC, then that also frees me up to be able to, to fight Muay Thai. And that's, that was like my dream. It's like I, I had the opportunity to fight in Raja Damnern Stadium for, you know, you know if, if I wanted to, I had the connections, you know. And I thought like, man, you know, 
owning a green WBC Muay Thai belt would be amazing. And there were still dreams of like, yeah, I still want to fight, but I want to fight Muay Thai, but I can't fight Muay Thai if I'm in the UFC. And Muay Thai, if I fought Muay Thai, that'd make me happy. You know, there's just a lot of just conflicting, <laughs> conflicting thoughts and, and things until, you know, having so much downtime during COVID, um, I just, I had come to the realization that you like, you know, I'm like, I'm not done. I still have, I still have a lot to give. It doesn't have to be about getting all of these big things in life. It just has to be about me continuing with my story and continuing to just give my best and be my best and, and appreciate the fact that the UFC still wants me around and the UFC still wants me to fight. So I just, I just had to kind of let the dust settle a little bit. And, um, I think a lot of my motivation lately has been, I do miss Thailand a lot and I miss my Thai family and, and I miss my Thai people. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I would love to be able to go back. And so I, I keep that in mind as, as well. Yeah. Cause you did briefly retire, right? It was, it was, I, I, I'd mentioned that the fight the, I had one more fight on my contract and I mentioned that that was going to be my last one. Okay. And I thought that, I thought that if I were to fight that out, that it would be my kind of retirement from MMA and my opening to be able to maybe pursue Muay Thai. And um, so I wasn't going to be done fighting completely, but I just knew that like, I wanted to do some, I wanted to get something else a shot. You know, maybe I want to fight Muay Thai, but um, yeah, uh, all of that kind of changed. And I just, I figured I would just be all in in, in what I do now. Uh, you mentioned like, oh, you only get 50% if you lose of your pay and things like that. And, you know, wanting to get more and, and, and being seen more. Do you struggle with what you guys are compensated? This is a big uh, topic these days in, in the sport. Do you, do you feel like it's it's just, you know, the the, the 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 win show model and all that stuff? You know, I can't say that I struggle because I, I'm like, to be honest, like I'm going to be 100 percent honest is like I do feel 100 percent grateful and like blessed to be able to make the money that I make. Would I love to be able to like, would I like it to be a little bit different? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't think that anybody would ever turn down getting paid more. Um, but uh, I'm also not going to necessarily complain about what I get paid right now, because the truth is, it's like, yeah, I am grateful. Um, do I think that there's room for us to get paid more? Yeah. Do I think that we could, uh, we could also benefit from being able to have, you know, personal like sponsors and endorsements and things like that. Yeah. I, I loved that. You know, I love I I would, I know for me, I would benefit so much if I could wear another brand on fight week or some, you know, something like that. There's, there's, there's other ways that I could make money if the structure was different. Um, and yeah, uh, but I, I can't like sit here and say like, I have a problem with it because I'm grateful for, for what I do have now. Um, but I do understand the the stance that, that a lot of people are taking and the, the opinions and, and, and words that other people have. I, I do understand it fully, but yeah, I'm not the guy that's like picketing, like we need more yeah. money. <laughs> but when the time comes, like I definitely will like, when the time comes, if they're like, hey, we're going to, you know, start paying you guys more sick, man, like, perfect that's gonna help out a lot so yeah it would be nice it would be nice if we uh if we got paid more especially for what we do but for the time being i'm grateful on the saturday like hours before the fight do you get very anxious before your fights and if so how do you conquer that and and, and is that why you need maybe a little more time like is it, this must take so much out of you i mean just seeing the emotion afterwards uh, that you're not maybe the kind of guy who wants to like jump back in in two weeks and do it all over again, or maybe not. I'm wrong. Um, so to answer the question about the like emotions before the fight, um, I used to be like an emotional wreck before my fights. I'd 
be in the hotel room bed, just my sheets would literally be soaked in sweat, just thinking and thinking and thinking. But um, as of late, I've completely taken a different approach. Um, on fight day, like the day of the fight, I train. Like I literally, I get up, we go run a few miles, you know, throw some medicine balls, do a full on workout, just feel good, feel good about the day, embrace being alive. Um, my coach had a conversation with, with Clay Guida a while back and he was like, man, if I can't wake up and, and, and go for like a, you know, a three mile run and, and do a workout, then like, what the hell am I doing going and trying to fight? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's, I think the, the way that I've been handling it lately is um, anytime I have any type of nerves or doubts or just like internal garbage, I just deal with it through getting active in some type of way. I think activity has been the cure to a lot of my mental, mm. uh, mental garbage. Yeah. So when would you, uh, how soon would you like to come back? Uh, I'd like to come back around like August. Okay. My goal was to fight. My goal was to fight three times this year is, is what I had in my mind. And, um, I think I do enjoy time in between fights because I like to reflect. I like to go back and kind of you know, read some of like my journal entries and things like that and really make sure that I give myself enough time to really grow and develop and not, and not like burn myself out or, you know, I'm not like eager to go in there and do it again so that I, you know, I'm not in a rush to get to the top. It's kind of more of, I, w I want to embrace the journey. I want to grow. I want to bring something different in the next fight when, you know, when, when people, Whoever it is that I fight next, when people watch again, I want it to be a completely different me. You know, did did you see uh, Connor's props, and does that mean anything to you? Are you? Uh... It means the world. Okay. It means the world. Um, Connor McGregor is one of my favorite fighters, absolutely. And so to see that, uh, to see that last night, that it put a smile on my face from ear to ear, man. <laughs> you know, like that was that was so cool, like. Conor McGregor like pretty much like giving me props and saying that I did something that wasn't like yeah boring that's that's cool to even know that he was watching I mean I know most UFC fighters watch fights but to even see that to know that he was tuned into the fight yeah I think that's that's cool yeah I'm geeked you don't see that often because go buy a whole case of proper 12 right now <laughs> I don't even they drink, but I'm just gonna keep that's like I'm gonna keep it in my in my cabinet just so every time I open it, I'm like that's gonna be my reminder of Connor's tweet. That's awesome. You could frame it as well. Yeah, man. Uh, to to do that kick to like launch that is is a tricky one, right? Because if you hit him in the head, it's illegal. You might lose the fight. Do you work on that timing? Do you work, or, or is that just something you saw in the moment and uh, you you found the opening? Uh, well, one of the things that I actually learned from Connor was precision, mm. right? He, he spoke of precision multiple times. And so um, it's not something that I practice, but I do practice. Like, it's not like that, the body kick, come like circling out of a heel hook, get up and then <laughs> body kick is not something that I necessarily practice, but I do practice precision. So um, I, I saw the exact spot that I wanted to kick. And that's what I aimed for. Um, and yeah, it landed as close to the spot as possible. That was beautiful. Perfect. Um, well done. I don't want, for the record, I don't want you to unblock me or any MMA media site. Uh, I just want to <laughs> say I am sorry if we were the source of any angst or frustration. I, I hate to hear that. I don't want to be that. I can understand why you would want to block it out. So I'm not offended at all but uh i am trying to be better i think we're all trying to be better we could get better as a media core uh and focus on the right things and and represent things the right way and cover things the right way so um that's not me trying to be unblocked or get in your good graces i just want to say i'm sorry for being that for for being that symbol to you because that bums me out and that 
lets me know that like we all need to be better and start focusing on the right things. So uh, I appreciate you being honest and I appreciate you even coming on the show despite that. Because I saw all these people tagging you. I was like, is, it, am I, is something up here? I'm not sure. But um, I respect you very much for what you stand for, what you represent and the inspiration that you are and your desire to not just get better yourself, but to make other people better. Because it could be one thing if you just want to be better yourself, that's commendable. But to have this passion to make other people better and to change their lives really says a lot about you. So I just want to wish you the best and say, you know, much respect to you. And for whatever you, you know, represent and whatever path you go on, you have my my utmost respect. I appreciate it. And I want to acknowledge you for something I do. I remember like, yeah, the last time I was on your show um, and even just the, the, the small clips and things that I've seen of you, let's say like over the past year, um, I just want to acknowledge you for your growth and your maturity, you know, and, and how you've handled just all of your adversity as well. I, I feel like there's more of a, you know, there's more of like this, this maturity and calmness to who you are and then how you present yourself. Um, and it's great. I, I, I really like, I really enjoy it. This has been an incredible, enjoyable experience for me to be able to, to, to share a connection with you that way. So thanks, man. I appreciate it. Anything yeah. that I didn't ask about that you wanted to, to say once, once we're here, or do you, do you feel like we said it all? Ah, yes. Lord of the, Lord of the streets, the movie. Oh yes. Um, I acted in a movie over the, um, like the last couple of months. Um, it's, um, Tretch from Naughty by Nature and myself will be kind of like the main characters. Wow. And then we got Anderson Silva, Hegan Machado, Chet Congo, Rampage Jackson, uh, Richard. Go. there's just, there's so many MMA legends in the movie. Um, crime drama. It's going to be really cool. Um, it is going to be on a, uh, on a, like a, a major streaming platform. I don't know if I can say it yet, All right. but um, yeah, it's it's set to release uh, in just a couple of months. So wow. yeah, check, check that out. And, and you have uh, like a legit think, role in it. You're not just like a bit player fighter guy. Legit role. Wow. Lines. Well done. Start. First one, yeah. right? First movie. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was, it was really enjoyable. And uh I think it's, I think for, for people who are fans of any of us, um, I think that they're really going to enjoy the, like the effort and, and, and stuff that we put in, into making this film. It's going to be really cool. So it's definitely one for, for the MMA fans for sure. And not one and done, right? You want to do more of this acting? Yeah, ab- absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there are, I, I, there's a director, um, out of Japan, who were also with the same agency um, and him and I and uh, a couple other people have been working on a script over the past nine months. Um, script is pretty much finished. Uh, we've had one pitch and uh, it's great. And that one I'll actually be play. I, I'm casted for the main role. Wow. Um, and it, it's, it's a great one. This is like a life life changing type of story. I think it's going to be really good. So we're just waiting around for that one to get picked up and, once that one goes, man, I know that one's gonna that one's gonna change the game. <laughs> wow, it's gonna change. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Much respect. Good luck with uh, you know what you're writing as well. Um, I look forward to seeing that film. That's that's quite the uh, the cast, quite the who's who. And uh, good luck with everything that you're doing. Uh, you always have a home here. If you want to get anything off your chest, say anything to the public. You have plenty of places to do so. But I really appreciate you coming on, Khalil and. Obviously, congratulations on the amazing win and, and everything that you're doing and the, the response to your, your interview. I mean, I posted one thing and it was just amazing. It had nothing to do with me, but just to see the love that you were getting is pretty amazing. So much respect, my man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right. Talk to you soon. All the best. There he is, Khalil Roundtree Jr., uh, an amazing fighter, an amazing human being. I told you he shouldn't have been the, uh, the underdog on Saturday. Carl Roberson is a great fighter as well, but... Uh, I just thought he looked tremendous in his last fight, and I thought that this was a great matchup for him. So um, much love to him. He is on Twitter as well and Instagram. And uh, it makes sense because I asked New York Rick, I was like, hey, is Khalil Roundtree's page up? And uh, he's like, no, it's not up, but now it makes sense, right? MMA fighting, part of the MMA media. Uh, I do have to apologize to GC. GC, you there? I'm sorry. It went a little long there. You were supposed to be on it too. 
Yeah, I mean, it's all right. I mean, <laughs> well, it was great. You're like Matt Damon on uh, Jimmy Kimmel. You know that joke? No. He always goes at the end. He's like, uh, we ran out of time. Matt Damon will be on tomorrow. And so you're, you're Matt Damon. But the good news is our show doesn't have a hard out. So you'll just be on after Cheeto. How do you feel about that? Actually closer to the original time. Yeah, I feel great about it, man. Do you feel like that was disrespectful? Do no, I need to apologize? Not at all. Not at all. I, I, I'm picturing you're you like... You're here for the fighters. You're not here for me. <laughs> I picture you sort of like being dressed up. You have something and you're like the 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 bride at the altar and, <laughs> you know... If it was the, Wednesday, yeah. Today, no. Oh, you don't have... Why? Well, usually on Monday you have something, no? It's... It, it, depends. it all depends on the holiday, yeah. Sure. Okay, cool. fair enough. Well, it is pie day today, so I'm hoping you have a pie. Well, you're going to be disappointed. Okay. Um... Now you have time. Well, now we have time. What? <laughs> Go grab a pie. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, page is sick. All right. Well, now we have time. Um, damn. Okay. Uh, let me see here. I just got a message from her husband. She has stomach flu. That's no fun. That's weird. Now we can actually get to GC. How about it? Um, all right. Well, sorry about that, guys. If you were looking forward to having Paige on, I uh, I apologize. I just got word from Joe, and I just got a text from Austin. Should we get Austin on instead? He said, hey, bud, uh, Paige has to cancel for today. She has the stomach flu. Was supposed to be flying out tonight. Da, da, da. Can't do that. Hope all is well. He signed it, Mr. Van Zant. All right. Well, that's a bummer. I hope she feels better. And uh, I'm sorry about that. We had a good streak there of no cancellations, but alas, the streak has come to an end. Uh, let me tell you about our good friends over at DraftKings. As you know, DraftKings Sportsbook, not only the official sports book of the UFC, also the official sports book of. The MMA Hour. College basketball fans, join the action on the court during the biggest tournament of the year with DraftKings Sportsbook. Turn your team's victory into your own big win. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. It's that simple. If they win, you win. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state just yet, you can still join the Collibs, Collibs, College Hoops action with DraftKings Pools. Everyone can play for free all March long for a shot at a share of over $250,000 in total prizes. How about that? Simply join a pool and answer questions like, who will make it to the next round and who will hit the most three-pointers? Then track your results. That's it. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Now use promo code DMAR, bet $5 on any college hoops team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If they win, you win with promo code DMAR this week at DraftKings Sportsbook. 21 and older. Restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Yeah. All right. I shouldn't have done that whole thing. I jinxed us. <laughs> and now here say, we are. You jinxed this. Yeah. Did you know that was happening as no, I was I saying no that? Clue. Nah. That is weird. <laughs> Obviously, I hope that uh, she feels better. And uh, I apologize to anyone who was tuning in right now for yeah, that interview. Say, yeah, I'm sure people are hyped to see yeah. me instead of uh, Paige yeah. Van Zandt. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're just as good looking if you ask me, okay? Don't sell yourself, yourself short. Um, all right. So, uh, big weekend for you, not a big weekend for me. Yeah, how did it feel? Chalk up and out. Did you get did you get big tripped up. online for it? Not really. A lot, I, a lot of people took it. A lot of I people know. like that's uh, actually what I felt bad about. Yeah, I gave out my picks and more people like rather than responding to the picks were like, Did you I'm take riding. Ariel's parlay? With the dog pound. That's what people were calling it. The dog pound because it was all underdogs. <laughs> uh, it's actually a good name for I liked it. It would have been a lot cooler if it had I know. And I have to be honest, Terrence McKinney, it started off so promising. It was so great, right? I know. I know. But, you know, you would have lost eventually anyway. Well, then I would have gone two for two with Khalil. So then I really would have been feeling myself. Yeah, you would have been hyped up. And then it would, and then it would have, have come crashing it. down. Yeah, I, will, I will say, though, 50% I could have lived with. You know, I, I, feel, I feel like one out of four is yeah. pretty whack. Um, 50%. I mean, yeah, you texted me at one point. I think you said like one for two. And I was like, well, technically you're, you're just 0 for one because it's a parlay. 
No, I know. But like, I just, you know, I wanted to, wow. Okay. Is that why you didn't text me back? Cause you thought it was like a, a noob <laughs> thing to say. Fair enough. Uh, how did you do there? Big shot. Oh, uh, no, I did. All right. We won some Invicta. Eagle, it's a lot, by the way, Bellator. it's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. It makes things infinitely more fun. Like All it's, of these things are true, yeah. Not even, like, I, I, I was sitting there, and I was like, I get it. I definitely get it. I think, I think we would have had you fully hooked if you had hit the parlay. Oh, I mean, no, no, listen, I'm fully hooked. But I totally get, like, I was freaking sitting there, and it's I was fun, like, dude. yeah, it's, it's, it's a crazy thing. It's a crazy yeah, thing. It's, but it's more so because of the pressure of tell, you know, ex- I never told anyone to do anything, but oh, for sure. feeling that people are like sort of like riding with you and you're like, ah, damn, I let everyone down. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fun though. These things happen. All right. So how did you do? I did all right, man. Uh, yeah, we did it all. Invicta, Eagle, Bellator, UFC. Yeah, right. I mean, we covered all, every huh? base. Uh, yeah, we started on Wednesday night. We'll, we'll go over the singles here. Uh, we go, uh, what is this, five and three, I believe, Karina Rodriguez. A uh, little bit of a sketchy win there, uh, but it was the open scoring. I don't know if you got to tune into Invicta at all. No. Yeah, they did the Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah but they've so, done it before. They've done it before. Oh, okay. Oh, I, so, okay. So I was... I, was I mean, you're, you're, you're new to the Invicta, you know. I, th- I thought that that was the first time they did no. it. They messed up. Going into the final round, they messed up the scorecard. Two of them were tied, and then they had one for the wrong person winning it. You're kidding. And then mid-round, they flipped it. And then also when they did the announcement, I... They really screwed up because they did the two razor thin scorecards first, and then they did the last one that gave away the winner immediately. Made, they were like, "Oh, forty nine, forty six. And as soon as they said that, you were like, "Oh, Karina Rodriguez won." So like, it took out. Any now, game. did the broadcast screw it up, or did they screw it up? Like, did the commission screw screw it up? See, I don't know. I don't. I don't know where where the mess up happened. But uh, but yeah, I liked the open scoring. I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, pretty cool. You know, I've been reading some more people and like people that I, I respect. I see Kapos out there and stuff. And every any person that is a dissenter towards this this idea, they talk about like entertainment, all this stuff. Like no one actually, number one, takes into account what the fighters are saying. Because thus far, like I think we're batting a thousand boxers and MMA fighters who are in favor, not to mention promoters, coaches. And and everyone is just talking about like how it would affect them or the judges or what about the actual people who are in there? They all want to know where they stand. Who wouldn't want to know where they yeah. stand? Yeah, I mean, going into that la- la- last round too, like they they also did the verdict score card. Ah, yes, as well, yes, our good friends. Which was, yeah, which was kind of cool. Shout out to verdict. I mean, yes. they were they were showing like the global scorecard as we as we went along, and like the public had it heavy for Karina Rodriguez, whereas the judges had two of them had it tied. So like. It all could have been decided in that last round, so it was cool to see that. So, like, people may have thought that, that Rodriguez stuff. was winning, but it was actually much closer than it appeared. So, uh, yeah, it was interesting. We pick up a W, a small W there. Uh, yeah, and then we do well the rest of the way. You know, five and three, you're not going to complain about that. We did go a little bit lighter, though. Uh, we'll go to the parlays. By the way, that Mads Burnell one, that was a great oh, fight. Yeah, great fight. Great, great fight. fight. I had, uh, had that on with some college hoops. It was a nice two TV right, night. Right, right. Um, what was on the main TV? The main TV was uh, UCLA, Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was weird. He was doing like the robot and stuff, but he was losing. Did you see that? He was like going. Yeah, like, like he got like rocked. Yes. And then he, like, <laughs> he like caught it with his arms. I was like, dude, what are you doing? It was like the fourth round too. It yes, wasn't even it was. Like he was fresh. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, pretty ridiculous. Parlays, we do well. Four and two. Uh, the super chalk, the super mega chalk where we just take giant favorites. That one works out for us again. Uh, and yeah, so there's this. Final recap. Uh Finish up 2.3 units uh, across all the up promotions. Again. When was the last time you were down? Uh, just a couple weeks ago. I mean, the next loser really? is around the corner. Yeah, we, I don't remember this. Uh, wait, like down overall or just a loser? No, no, no. Just like down on a week. I don't I feel like you've yeah, been up. It was like, like two, three weeks ago. Really? Yeah, all the right. next one's around the corner. You know, never sure. get too high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Humble, humble. 13 units on the air. Just a hair under 25 all time. Uh, I guess we're working toward 30 now. We're working toward th- the run. I feel 30. like you could get 30 by... Oh, wow, we're setting expectations. Yeah, well, I did it last time and it works. Um, what's it? I'm going to say end of April, if you if you do right. this right. I feel like that's doable, right? Yeah, it takes, you know, a bad week or two to, to really set us back, but... Nah, I think you could do it. I think we can do it, too. Just keep the profits coming. That's all that matters, right? Yes. Uh, 
Speaking of profits, a lot of people hitting big this weekend, like really big. I had a hard time deciding on this. Not me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's always next week. There's always yeah, next week. Yeah. Yeah, if you make this a regular thing, eventually you'll hit one. And then everybody will go crazy. And sure. We'll be asking for your picks. Uh, yeah, let's start out with Savage Banana here. Uh, big hitter number one. I mean, talk about a savage play here from the Banana Man. Four legs plus 26961 turns turns $100 into 27000 Get these four plays. Guido Canetti by KO. Miranda Maverick by submission. Wow. JJ Aldrich, decision. Song Yudong, KO. Goes four for four. I'm in. That is 7,000. That's like a year's worth of rent. Like, that's Jesus. like that's like some life altering type of money on a hundred dollar bet. So shout out to By the Savage way, when Man. you win twenty seven thousand, do you you have to pay taxes on that, you right? You have to. You have to. I, I don't know. I don't have the experience with it. So. And what is the, what what percentage, do you know? I don't know. I imagine it's tax pretty heavy. Savage banana knows now. Now if you do that. this like offshore, do you not have to pay taxes? How does that work? I think you still have to pay taxes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. I feel like the government would come asking if you got 27000 27000 That is absurd. Uh, he wasn't the only one, though. We'll go to the next one. An honorable mention. Uh, one of the sharpest in the game. Great follow on Twitter. Lucrative MMA. Uh, these were bigger bets, man. He goes $25,000 on a what? Miranda Maverick. <laughs> Ankalaev parlay. Hits that. Wins about sixteen k. Throws five hundred on Miranda Maverick by sub. Plus five hundred. Wins that. Another twenty five hundred. And then. And then I actually tried to get on board with this because he tweeted before the race. He had some sort of friend that had like part ownership or like some sort of knowledge about a horse. 360. He places 500 on that plus 1400. Wins seven grand. Like he tweeted it out. I tried to bet on him. What was like, the race? It was uh, Ellerslie. Uh, <laughs> it was just like a horse race, a random horse race. I tried to find it, but it was like an Australian or a New Zealand track. So I couldn't find it. Uh, but yeah, he wins that. Originally he lost and then he got called back. And he won. So, like, I mean, we're talking about, like, $25,000 in profits from all these. So, it's just, like, people are just getting it. Jeez. And what does that say at the top in red? Lad Brokes? Yeah, yeah. That's a book. That's a that's a book that's available. What is that? In the UK? UK, Australia, New Zealand. Okay. These is are it, down under. So. Is it a legit one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then some quick mentions here. Some, some final ones. Uh, Prodigy MMA. This guy, all the faith in the world on our boy Guido Canetti, round one KO plus fifteen hundred turns a hundred fifty dollars into twenty four hundred. Weird moment after that fight when he bumped into uh, yes. Moutinho, yeah. and then he apologized afterwards. And then Moutinho's- also spe- speaking of Canetti, I like I kind of made a joke like video of like it was like him walking across the cage against Piotr Jan, just as like a. I was really solely joking. I mean, he's forty three years old. A lot of people took it seriously. Wait, you <laughs> did make that video? What yeah, are you saying, I made like? Soon, like, yeah, coming soon. Oh. Like, uh, Guido Canetti, yeah. And a lot of people were like, dude, he's he's eight and six or whatever. I was like, yeah. Chill is, out, guys. I'm not being serious. Sometimes like, nuance, sarcasm doesn't go over very well on Twitter, just for the record. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last couple ones. Signature MMA picks. I mean, these people are just like, this guy turns fourteen ninety nine. That's like a, a month yeah. subscription to Netflix into $2,200 Dang. on two parlays. And then Billy McLaughlin. I mean, this guy just hit like an exact as well. I appreciate that Billy's using his real name. Most of these guys are using like That's what I'm saying. Picks. Shout out to Billy. He also yeah. had a picture if we were going to use pictures. But yeah, Mirzakhanov KO, Kennedy KO, Brundage submission. I mean. Respect. Respect. $20 into 7600 So that Mirzakhanov and that Cody must have been kind of sweaty though. Oh, yeah. So yeah, shout out to the people, man. Cashing out. Shout making out my heart. Real people. Shaking out. Making my heart. Making my job hard here. Yeah. With how many people cashed out. I mean, it was. A Do we have a draft king? Oh, we have a draft game. Oh, we have yes. a draft game. Let's get to it. Look at this. Uh, wow. Who put the curtains on? Stage? Wow. I mean. Now, should it be draft king? We're not done yet. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Wow. Real? No. Not a real not picture. Not a real picture. Not a real picture. That's Marlon Brando. Wow. Holy shit. Jeez Louise. It's like Mario. This is some of my best work here, yeah. How long does this take? I, I would not like to admit how long it took. Wow. Even... <laughs> oh, man. That is amazing. Shout out to Brandon Wright, the draft king for the week. Beautiful lineup by him. Roundtree, Pereira, McKinney, Basarat, Damon Jackson, and Miranda Maverick. So I mean, he went undefeated. Really... Is it possible to be the draft king without, like, with going, like, what was it, five guys? 
Yeah, no, McKinney lost. But he's oh, right, right, right. From him, yeah. Oh, uh, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a great week for him, man. I mean, damn. E- easy week on DraftKings. Well, I'm not going to lie. I actually lost that file for that for a second. And it was right when you were coming over to talk to me pre show. And I was like having a little heart attack. Oh, my God. In my own mind. Why didn't you tell me? Yeah. You were, just, I, I mean, you I, were. I, I had faith that I was going to find it, but I was actually like really sweating. Wow. I mean, your poker face is pretty damn good, if I'm yeah, being I was, honest. I was pretty worried. Wow. I, I mean, you're like, Jesus, why does he have to walk over now? <laughs> Can you get the F away? I Here saw I you am. In the talk- corner of my eye. Oh, you're like, like, oh, God. Oh, God. Here, he Here he comes. I was like, maybe if I don't look at him, he won't say anything. Oh, and I walked over and you're oh. right over. That's when I first came in. Yeah. Talking to you about like what? Baseball or something? I don't even remember. I was. Yeah. I was I'm pretty hyped about baseball, if I'm being honest. Yeah, Braves. Braves. Uh, exactly, Gwinner. I don't even know what we're doing with these graphics anymore, but sc- scrimping grits here. Yep, <laughs> me and him. He had a picture of a dog that's close enough to a person. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, now, who are these people, or is it just random uh, big timers? This is, this is the guy that won the big money league. No, no, I know, but like uh, the original photo. Oh, yeah. That's, I just look up rich couple every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like it. So yeah, that's the shout outs, man. Wait, so this person, how much people. does he win? He won four hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. And the yeah. other person? Uh we did a hundred people this week, so he probably won like two to three hundred. Wow. Yeah, man. All from DraftKings. All from DraftKings. Shout out to DraftKings. What are we doing about the uh NCAA basketball tournament? All right, so we're going to have a pool, a free pool, like you just mentioned in the ad read. We'll do a free pool and then a paid pool. But the only problem is sorry, I'm listening, I'm just getting my is the suit. paid pool is only available to people that can legally sports bet. So kind of a drawback there. I've fully explained the rules now. now Sorry, I, I actually missed like that because I was, was getting my soup. Get can you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you do that again? Uh, okay. Free pool, paid yeah. pool. Free pool is open to anyone that can get DraftKings. Paid pool is only available to people that can sports bet. So it's like on the sports book. I have no idea why. I don't know why that's the case, but that is unfortunately the case. So the money league... You know, they'll obviously win money. The free league, maybe, you know, they win something, uh, you know. Uh, How can you win something if it's a free league? We provide something, you know, maybe. Oh, a, like a, a like a ball soup date with the great Ariel Hawani. Wow. What about a butternut squash? Butternut squash date with the great Ariel Hawani. Mm-hmm. They pay for the flight out. We pay for the soup. I think it's a fair deal if you ask I me. I think so too. Um, okay. And that begins on Thursday. Do they do yeah, anything yeah, for the NCAA like, wrestling tournament? Not that I know of. I don't yeah. know anything about that. By the way, your backdrop is uh, outdated. Paul Hughes, I just saw, is out of the fight. Ugh. Yeah. Big <laughs> fight for Cage Warriors. Oh, man. Wow. I have a few things to say about Cage Warriors, but I'm not going to say them right now. I'm not at liberty. Tag you in something again? No, I actually finally DM'd them. Oh, and you were like, stop tagging me in something? Yes. Uh, Funny enough, I followed them and I started like clicking on to see who their tags were. And uh, it's annoying, right? Yeah. Let's see. I saw it was always you. Well, it's, it doesn't annoy me. I don't know why I agreed with you there. No, it's annoying. Come on. Um, yeah, yeah, they haven't even. I mean, I wrote to them. Hey guys, I appreciate the tags, but not necessary anymore. Thank you. But they didn't see it. Uh, actually, I bet they saw the beginning of the message and they just don't want to acknowledge like, oh, it. I don't yeah, wanna, yeah. Just delete it. I don't want to acknowledge that there. Hmm. Lad Brooks. Okay, thank you, Angela. Angela's telling me it's pronounced Lad Brooks. Lad Not Brooks. I mean, I could see how you get fooled by Lad Brooks. Yeah. Um, how, what were we talking about? The DraftKings? Draft oh, Kings the Kings NCAA Madison. tournament. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll tweet something out about it if people want to join. I want to join Shout that. Mike and Zaga Bulldogs. Yeah. One overall seed. Why are they yours? I've just always wanted them to win a national title and they've never won one. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you have no connection to them. Bulldogs, I guess. Sure, Georgia. Is Georgia in it? No, dude. They, they are so garbage at basketball. Yeah. Fired their coach. UFC London this week. Going to be a UFC great UFC London. Card. I just pulled it up. Uh, Curtis. No. Well, why is Curtis Blades on here? Uh, ooh. Mr. Aspinall is an underdog. Yeah, so I've actually locked in Aspinall at plus 120. Whoa. Arnold Allen. For Dog? Like a br- for like a, a brief moment, he jumped to plus 110. I took him there. Jack Shore, I took him at plus 154. Nathaniel Wood, as soon as the odds dropped on this newest uh, fight, I took him at minus 210. Uh, so, yeah, I've got those four. I've had those four locked in for a minute now. Yeah, I see Jack Shore plus 125 here. He's been uh, dropping, dude. I'll, actually, all of these have been dropping. Arnold Allen and Aspinall, not so much, but, but Shore and Wood. 
I am uh, I'm an investor. I see Wood as a minus 300. What'd you get him at? 210. It's mm. those uh, the best fight odds notifications. Man. Yeah, you jump Smartest on it. Smartest thing you can do. Yep. Got Michael Chandler at minus 155 for that fight against Ferguson. Ooh, really? That's yeah. going to go up. Oh, it's already gone way up, yeah. Has it? Yeah, I'm telling you, man. These notifications, you see me. I get all, I get all antsy. I'm like, I gotta get it in. I gotta get it in. Because you know they're gonna move quick, man. Yeah. Right. Wow. I'm actually surprised Aspinall's an underdog. I wonder if that stays. I mean, Volkov is great, but I think Aspinall's gonna win that fight. I hope so. I hope so, man. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a big this Saturday. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make myself an English breakfast. I'm gonna get oh, all yeah? in. I'm what? gonna do the beans and and everything. Uh, sausage. Yeah. Sausage. Black pudding. Black pudding, the tomatoes. I'm going to do everything. Wow. Start the Saturday mushrooms. off right. Mushrooms? Yeah, mushrooms, Frank said. Yeah, what is black pudding? I always uh, forget. It's like it's, a sausage. I don't know. I've never had it. I'm excited for it. It's gross. It's like the liver or something like that, right? It's just a sausage. No, it's not. It's black. What is black? <laughs> now, we're, now, now are we all sitting here Googling yes. what, what black is pudding is? Black pudding. Oh. See, that is not a sausage, Frank. It's I mean, pork. It's made from pork. Yeah, I'll never touch it. I rest uh, my case. <laughs> it's a distinct regional type of bl well, black. Oh, black pudding. Sorry, is a type of blood sausage originating in. I'll but, accept your apology on or off. No, air. it's fine. It is made from pork or beef blood, with pork fat, beef suet, and a cereal, usually oatmeal, oat groats, or barley groats. I mean, it sounds like the grossest thing of all time. The high proportion of cereal along with the use of certain herbs, such as penny royal, serves to distinguish black pudding from blood sausages eaten in other parts of the world. I don't know how I'm going to find this. I don't know if you can just buy this or you have to make it. Yeah, I wonder. You'll find it, yeah. I feel like you can find it in, uh, in Brooklyn. The word pudding is believed to derive from the French boudine, originally from the Latin botellus, meaning small sausage. Yeah, it's not a problem, man. It sounds horrible. It's a imagine good source you, of protein, uh, low in carbohydrates, high in zinc and iron. Imagine if you're tuning in right now and you're like, oh, I'm late to the Van Zandt interview. Yeah, I know. This is what you get. Uh, by the way, since the 1980s, the World Black Pudding Throwing Championships has been held in Rambustan. The humorous competition invokes the traditional Lancashire, Lancashire, Ro Yorkshire rivalry with participants throwing the black puddings at piles of Yorkshire puddings. Uh, it takes place annually in September and draws thousands of competitors and spectators to the town. Uh, in the past years, the Bakup Food and Black Pudding Festival has been held in Bakup. Oh, thank you. Um, all right. Well, I hope you get that. I was going to suggest haggis, but that's a uh, a Scottish thing. Yeah. No, I'm going to do the English breakfast since it's in London. I'm going to go. I'm going to go all out. Man, this would be a fun one to go to. That crowd is going to be insane. I think I'm as excited for this card as I am for like a typical pay per view. Yes. Like, well, I'm just really looking forward to that. There's a nice mix of matchups of names. Uh, Jai Herbert, Nathaniel Wood, Corey McKenna, um, the Makwan versus Mike Rundy fight. Mohamed Mokhaev is a huge one. Finally making his debut, our good friend Molly McCann, Meatball Molly, Jack Shore versus Timur Valiev. People are very upset that Jack Shore is not on the main card. Who cares? It's all the same thing. Well, what's the difference? Uh, Paul Craig is always fun. Gunnar Nelson, completely forgotten about. We haven't yeah. seen him in forever. Patty returning his second UFC fight. I mean, there's really a nice little story attached to every fight on this card. The best fight that I saw this past weekend, the absolute best fight that I saw this weekend wasn't in the UFC. It wasn't in Bellator. It wasn't in any of these. It was the Lee Wood versus Mick Conlon boxing match, which was just an amazing fight from start to finish. Conlon drops him in the first, looking great early on. Um, he's in enemy territory. It's in England, and the crowd is phenomenal. The like, I was going from the apex to like the apex, where it's like no atmosphere, no crowd, to that crowd where they're singing and all this stuff. It's like, oh, this is the way combat sports needs to be digested, right? This is the way you need to watch this sort of thing. And and then at the end, eleventh uh, round, he gets dropped controversially, looked like a slip, whatever. And I don't know if you saw this. He got. Knocked out of the ring. Did you see this? No, I did not see this. I saw you tweeting about it, but I didn't. Oh my see god, it. it was insane. So actually, my son. So it was what I love about those, 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 those English, those British cards, um, and usually they're on the zone. You know, it's happening at four, five, six o'clock, and for whatever reason this time, because I'm always watching, my kids 
took a liking in this fight. And I was telling them that I was rooting for Mick Conlon. He's been on the show before, lovely guy. They were rooting for Wood and they were really getting into it, which was awesome. And then they're watching it. And in the 12th round, you see this? I'm watching it right now. Yes. He falls through the ropes. He gets knocked out through the ropes in the 12th round. And if you watch it again, you'll see he's kind of out of it before he gets punched. He's kind of out of it. And then with the, the next punches, he gets knocked out through the ropes, like feet up, falls into the hands of his dad. His dad was the one that caught him. Standing right there. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it now. And it was very scary because they never showed him on the broadcast. They, 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 so you could see right away, Lee Wood is like, he is rattled by this. He looks nervous. They never show him. Every, he's telling everyone. Lee Wood is an absolute, like, I love this guy. A class act. He's telling everyone to calm down, be quiet, be quiet. They then are starting to tell us that a stretcher is coming again. Like, you're like, this guy got knocked out. Did he fall on his neck? And by the way, shout out to Big E who injured his neck. Horrible stuff. Broke his neck on Friday. Smackdown. So a lot of gruesome injuries this past weekend. Um, but that was, I mean, for it to end like that, after this guy was probably going to win the fight if it goes the distance, um, Wood had to win via knockout, and he knocks him out of the ring. It was insane. It was unbelievable. But anyway, the reason I bring it up, and by the way, Mick Conlon's okay. Uh, I actually DM'd with him. He wrote me back. He's okay. Uh, he showed up the next day. They were taking pictures with each other. I mean, it was just an amazing scene. But it, there's nothing like those British crowds. Nothing like them. I mean, the British crowds, the Irish crowds, pound for pound the best. That's what I'm excited for this weekend, man. I can't wait. All the, all the you know... The People fanfare. The kingdom, fighting this weekend, everything. Like, I had the fight night on mute watching basketball, and then for the main event in, like, the middle of the first round, like, I took it off mute, and it was just yeah, like, ah. Uh, what is at the ace They're at the apex. You can just hear the shuffling of the feet. Stop. And like, yes. Uh, enough. The, the coach talking. I was like, ah, uh, you might as well just put it back on mute. It's like we're still, st- you know, like, I, I feel like we're still in the... The early days of the pandemic when I see this, you know? Yes. And I, I know they've let a few fans in, but like you look everywhere else and it's packed crowds and it's energy and enthusiasm and cheering. And so this is going to be great. I mean, this is going to be the first fight night. I mean, I guess they did those Abu Dhabi ones, but I don't think that that was a full crowd. So I think this will be the first fight night with a crowd since uh, late February 2020 with a full crowd. It's awesome. And then we get Columbus the week after. Columbus, but this is a better card. I mean, yes. I, <laughs> it's not even... Like, I agree, but I'm saying we'll at least get a crowd the following week. Sure, sure. I mean, like, it's, I, it's I think a, the crowd changes everything. Actually, this is now three straight weeks of crowds because uh, 19, 26, they're off that, that next weekend, and then yeah, it's and then 273. 273. So we're getting a little Let's spoiled go. here. And then we're going to go back to the Apex. <laughs> um, but yes, I, I can't wait. The O2 is a great venue. I've been there a couple times. Most recently, I think, was the uh, Michael Bisping-Anderson Silva fight back in 2016. That was incredible. And it's very smart that Cage Warriors is doing an event uh, the night before, get everyone there, give them something to do. So if you are traveling to England, I'm, I'm sure you're going to be very excited and uh, you know have a lot of things to do. And it's great. It's great for that market. They deserve it. They, they, I mean, these guys, they deserve more than one UFC card a year. If you ask me, they have to stay up till freaking, you know, 5 a.m., 6 a.m. to watch these pay-per-views. The least they could do is get some cards more often than not. And this is a big spot for Aspinall. I think Aspinall is going to be a title contender in, in the not too distant future. And this is like a showcase fight for him. And again, wow, Cup, in the sense that this is, in my opinion, constructed to put him over, right? To get him to that next step. Yeah. And I want to be clear, Volkov is no scrub. He's he's not a, I mean, he's a former Bellator champion, but I think that this is, I mean, this has been designed for Aspinall to look like a superstar. I hope you're right, because I already have a bet on him. <laughs> uh, you know, you you let me bet on Roberson last week. You, even, I didn't. Now I'm, now I'm getting guilt tripped into the, the round tree thing. You said it was the biggest lock on earth. Uh Enough of me, though. We got Dan Hooker. Okay, yeah. Well, man, who's going to be fighting at the O2? I am happy that you didn't listen to me last week. Just for the record, that I already have an investment against Dan Hooker, unfortunately. Oh, don't tell him that. I mean, it's I the battle of the great guys. Battle. It of is the, great the battle of the great guys. Never met them, but they are great guys. <laughs> uh, it's my people's main event. All right, thank you very much. We did. You see, I apologize for nothing. It all worked out. We got you in. Uh, our best to Paige. I hope she feels better soon. Makes a speedy recovery, and uh, in a matter of seconds here, we'll be joined by. Hangman, Dan Hooker, I can't wait for this fight, but I'm a little torn because I love both guys so much. They're just such lovely fellows. Arnold Allen, 17-1. Haven't seen him since uh, 
when was it? Uh, April of last year, that ABC card against Sadiq Youssef. Youssef looked good on Saturday against Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres. And uh, we haven't seen Dan since October. Obviously, he took that fight on short notice. He's getting a lot more time to prepare for this fight. And he's doing so as a featherweight. The last time he fought in the 145-pound division was November of 2016. Uh, fought Jason Knight, then came back as a lightweight and won four fights in a row. So a lot of people initially were a little bit surprised that he's making this move. But he looks great. He did the test cut. He's all in. And he has turned into one of the most beloved and popular fighters in the sport. It's an amazing thing. It's the co-main event. It's the people's main event. And like I said, there's there's a lot to like in each and every one of these fights. People excited, of course, about the return of Patty. That's going to be a crazy scene with his walkout music. Uh, Molly is always a fan favorite fighting uh, at home. I mean, this is the uh, this is the card that was supposed to happen in September that didn't happen except for the fact that Darren Till is not competing on it. He fought uh, Derek Brunson on that card. He is not competing on this one, but it's okay. There's a lot to like, including the co-main event. And so without further ado, let us say hello to one half of the co-main event, the one and only Dan Hooker. There he is. Hello, Dan. How are you? I'm well, mate. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I hardly recognize you. You're so skinny. Your face is so slim. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Stop, shucks. You're embarrassing me. You look fantastic. How do we feel? No, I feel great. I feel great. Like training camp's been um well, it's been very good. <laughs> it's been it's been pretty good, which has been a, a like a nice change of scenery for the last couple. So I'm I'm just excited to get out there and kind of showcase it all. Okay, so I have many questions. First I have to say I love this fight, but I also hate this fight, Dan. I have mixed emotions. I mean, you're two of the nicest guys. I, I love both of you so much. Arnold is such a lovely fellow. I don't know if you've ever met him. You're such a lovely... It's like, I don't... Uh, I'd rather you guys, like, have tea together or play some chess, not punch each other in the face. Highly unlikely that that's mm. the way... <laughs> that's the way we're going to sort it out. Uh, yeah, that's just the nature of the... That's the nature of the sport. Uh, what do you think of Arnold? Are you a fan of his? Yeah. Oh man, it's um, it's an exciting fight. When I first got approached about Arnold, you know, he's an eight fight win show. I definitely knew who he was and had followed his career. Um, so I was just, I was excited by that. Yeah, it's one of those funny fights where he doesn't have a big name, but he's definitely got the skills there to back it up. So it's, it's one of those fights. It's obviously you want a big name. Who's rubbish? That's right. like your ideal fight. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so at, at first, but um. Yeah, it's exciting. Eight by win streak, you know, it's hard to deny anyone in the UFC on an eight by win streak is not in title contention or positioning themselves for title contention. So that's who I want to fight. I want to fight the best. I want to get in there and put my name in the mix. And, and this is a perfect fight for that. By the way, where are you right now? This room is very cool looking. I'm with my mate. I'm with my mate. I'm with my mate Kev's place. Yeah. Uh, He's got a pretty, he's got a, he's this is a incredible. nice bed. Yes. Wow. What a room this is. This is amazing. Um, I mean, he needs to upgrade his Wi-Fi a little bit, if I'm being honest, but the room is fantastic. <laughs> he spent it all oh, in the decor. Know. Yeah, yeah, please let him know. Uh, are you familiar, Dan, with the term kayfabe from the world of pro wrestling? I don't have a clue. Kayfabe is like, uh, you know, if I ask someone... Um, you know, who's going to win uh, WrestleMania next month? They'll be like, oh, I don't know. It's a, it's a real thing. You know, they kayfabe you. They don't, you know, they, they keep the script close to their vest. They don't tell you the truth. You actually kayfabe me. I reached out to you about this fight and you're like, nah, man, I'm, I had COVID. I just came back. And I was like, Dan, I know this fight is happening and you totally kayfabe me, right? I mean, I thought we were mates. Why did you do this to me, Dan? Hey, it, it. Sean had messaged me that morning <laughs> with the fight. So Sean had messaged me that morning and yeah. had said, hey, Dan, you want to fight Arnold Allen? I messaged him back and because Kai, uh, Kai fights the next week in Columbus. I was like, can I just move it to the Columbus card? 
so then I can we can go together, you know what I mean, and and have our coaches and all of that, make it a bit easier. So I I messaged them back. So I did not even been confirmed yet. Then in the afternoon, you messaged me about the fight, and I was like, I barely even know about this fight. I got no idea how he knows about this fight. You're just you mean it's it's like you're you're hacked into my emails or something like that. But no. I'm good at my job. What can I say? He's in the know. I'm I'm the nose oh, that knows. It's good at your it's, it's good at your job, and then you just <laughs> hey, you're on a whole other level. <laughs> yes, I'm a stalker. That's actually the truth. But it's okay. I didn't take any uh, <laughs> offense to it. I knew you know you like to keep the cards closed. That's okay. Um, I did have you. Hey, I I never I I never denied I mm. never denied the fight. I said I said who would take a fight like that? And then what did I say? I never said. And what did I say? Yeah, and I didn't reply. So I never. If I'm, if we're being honest here, I never lied. Sure, I, ne- I would never lie to you. But in I my defense, <laughs> that's fair. In my defense, you remember what I said back to you? Yes, I said. I just want to. You said. I said, you said, who would accept a fight under those conditions? And I said, I believe you would accept a fight under those conditions with a smiley face. How about that? <laughs> and then I just. And then you just. That. Yeah, you left me on scene after that. <laughs> We both knew at that point, let's be honest. Yeah, we both knew. We both knew. Um, I had Eugene on not that long ago, and it seemed to me like he actually wasn't in favor of this. I asked him about you moving down to 45, and then you did the test cut, and obviously, you know, at that point, like, they had to let you do it. But you, did you receive resistance from all your coaches, from everyone around you about doing this? Uh, yeah, I, I originally... Um, I originally approached him about it, moving down to 45, well over a year ago, about a, over a year and a half, over a year and a half ago. I let them know that I, you know, I feel, I feel like I, 45, I'm, I'm comfortable moving back to 45 and that's um, a weight class that I feel better uh, competing at. And yeah, they, they not necessarily resisted. They just believe that I can, compete well and beat everyone at, you know, beat the best guys in the world at, at 55. But for me personally, I just feel like 45 is the weight class that I feel the best competing at, at that level. If you're fighting for 25 minutes, if you're fighting that handful of elite guys in the world, 45 is the weight class that I feel best competing at. Now that you've actually, you know, gone through the camp, what is life like fighting as a featherweight for you? I'm, I'm, yeah, this is my weight class. 100% without, without a shadow of a doubt. I've not even got to the stepping on the scales, but this is, um, this is my, this is my weight class. Why? Like, why is it? Because most would say, I mean, you had such great success at 55 and you can eat more, you can be happier, I would imagine, you know, because you don't have to, why is this the weight class? Why do you feel like this is the right fit for you? Um, it, it requires like another level of dedication or like another level, another level, level of sacrifice, which kind of adds focus. Like it, it just really lasers in like there's, I can't muck about at 45, 55. I can, you know, muck about or not muck about, but you know what I mean? Like you can <laughs> have a bit of cake at someone's party. You can have a couple of beers on the weekend. And and when you're just doing stuff like that, um, for me, this is not for every fighter, but for me, like you can kind of forget about the fight. You know what I mean? You can kind of, when you're doing that, you're at the barbecue and you're eating what everyone else is eating and that stuff. You can kind of forget about that fight. But at 45, you can't forget. For that eight, nine, ten weeks before the fight, you can't forget. Like it's on your, it's, you get, you wake up in the morning and you think about it. You think about it every meal you eat. You think about it when you go to sleep. I'm not saying like I'm starving. Like my my camp has been perfectly fueled, but it, it requires another level of sacrifice. It requires another level of dedication that 55 doesn't demand of me. So this is. This is why it's the best weight class for me because to compete at 45, I have to be 100 laser focused in, mm. and it brings out the best of me, which it has. This camp, without a doubt, has been challenging. 
but without a shadow of a doubt, it has brought out the best in me. And it has um, made me develop and made me grow at a greater greater speed than I could ever do at, at 55. So wow. that's why, man, I, I just can't wait. I'm sick of I'm sick of talking about. I just want to I want to show you. I want to get out there. I want to um, I want to touch gloves. I want to ring that bell, and I just want to sh- I just want to show everyone the level that I'm on. Uh, I, I obviously follow you on social media, and every so often I see you having all kinds of desserts and stuff. How are you doing this? Ice cream and whatnot. Nutrition, mate. Nutrition. You gotta. You gotta. Uh, yeah, like. It's, it's funny the, the like the level of um, like misunderstanding people have about about nutrition. Like I, I put out the one as chicken nuggets and chips and uh, like yeah. peas or something like that. Yeah, but I had the I had Charles, who's the UFC's dietitian, message me and say that's that's a great plate of food right there. That's a <laughs> well balanced protein, carbohydrates, fats, vegetables. That's a that's a great plate of plate of food, which I I believe as well. People. Oh, now I'm bringing back the chicken nugget. Chicken nuggets don't make you fat. Eating too many chicken nuggets make you fat. Ah, that is the key. Okay, and and is that is that who is working with you, or do you have someone in uh, New Zealand who's working with you? Yeah, well, I, I work with um, Jordy Sullivan, the fight dietitian. Ah, uh, yeah, he's based in Australia. He does he does all of our team, um, pretty much everyone at, at City Kickboxing. So I work very closely with Jordy, like uh, at the fight dietitian. I'm messaging back. I kind of pick his brain constantly, and he gives me like a like a loose kind of diet to follow. But then, yeah, there's also the UFC staff, which are absolutely incredible. Charles and Clint, um, the guys, the team at the PI. Like I'm always, I'll keep them updated with everything that's going on. They they can they help me out. Um, fight week and stuff like that. So just surrounded by the absolute, like Charles is all that helped me with the, that. They were sitting in the sauna with me there uh, when I did the test cut. Like these guys go above and beyond, above and beyond what they do. It's not just like a job to them. They're they're the they're the best in the world at what they do. Right. Um, we've talked in the past, not that long ago, about what it's like to train in New Zealand. Uh, over the pandemic, what is it like now? Like, was it a lot easier this time for this camp? Freedom, freedom, freedom. Now we're we're like we're back, so no restrictions. Uh, yeah, well, there's like restrictions, but not to our training. Our training will never be shut down again. But we're through it. Our border is now open for New Zealand citizens, so I can go and fight. And I can come home. Wow. Which is just wow. unreal. That's a, it's unreal that the like the weight that, that lifts on your shoulders. Like you play it pretty cool. Um you play it pretty cool. You know, when people are like, oh, you know, you're gonna go over and fight and then knock home for four months and you're like, Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna think about that, you know, or we saw that after a fight. But without it, like it, of course, that plays on your mind. That plays on your mind. Um, when you're fighting, especially, especially when like, I'm not saying that's any kind of excuse or anything like that, but the kind of fights that I get myself into take a certain amount of time to recover from <laughs> uh, months. That's the, and that's the part of fighting that people don't see. They see you on the television. They see you for that couple of days after the fight. They see you every now and then when you post something on on social media, but. I've had some fights in, in my career that have taken months to recover from. And being back home, being on your couch, being surrounded by your friends, your family, um, having my my child there, my wife there, like that, that is everything. Like that, that is everything to you. That helps you like heal. So yeah, of course it would play on your mind when you're going away to fight and you can't <laughs> you can't do any of that. You can't see those people and you're gonna be stranded in a, in a foreign country with um, no friendly faces for, for months on end uh, definitely changes the ingredients. But now it's, now it's all changed. Now we're back to, now we're back to normal. Um, fly straight back home. It's just like a weight. I can't imagine. Off my shoulders. I can't imagine. So are you going to go home after this or are you going to go to Columbus to be with uh, Kai? 
nah, he's on his own. Nah, nah. <laughs> Eugene and, and Twister. So, uh, yeah, like our head coach and our striking coach, they're, they're coming over here. So um, Eugene and Twist are coming over and I'll meet them in London tomorrow. Tomorrow they land in London. Um, and then they'll fly from here to Columbus. I'll fly to, I'm flying to Australia because my wife, my wife has been stuck out in New Zealand because the borders only just opened like a, I think it's like a week or a week or two ago. So I've actually been, um, my wife and my child have been stuck in, stuck in Australia. So I haven't seen them for months. So I'm dying. Oh. I'm going to get on the plane, go to Australia, see, see my wife, see my, see my baby. And then we'll come back to New Zealand together. Man, the amount of time that you've spent away from your family in the last couple of years to me is just is is unimaginable and incredible and a, a testament to your dedication. Um, when do you remember the last time you saw them? It'll be before not this year. What? So I haven't seen them. Yeah, I haven't seen them this year. You haven't seen so you saw them end of twenty twenty one. I remember you were in New York, right? Yeah, New York, New York. So when I um, I flew back to New Zealand, and um, they they flew to Australia. Damn. Because obviously, obviously she she uh, my wife is is Australian. Um, was born in Australia. Has, or her family's an Australian uh, in Australia, and she just hasn't been home in what, two and a half, two and a half, three years. Been stuck out of Australia. So. Um, and also like her, her grandfather passed away a couple of years ago and she hasn't been able to oh, get back and see her family. So she's gone over there to finally see her, her grandmother and her father. And then I came back to New Zealand and lucky enough, I, I got the fight, which kind of sped things up a bit. I can just get out, um, fight and then go back and see them a bit quicker. By the way, uh, did you like New York? Very cold. Yes. It's a very cold place. Nah, it's it's cool, man. It's I was I was ran around pretty much the whole island. I was jogging because I was down in um, near the World Trade Memorial. Yeah, that's yeah. like where yeah. where my wife's family is. And yeah, I was like up running, like running up to Central Park from there and around. And I did a couple of yeah. I think it was about. I can't translate it to miles. It's about a hundred and hundred yeah, yeah. days running around New York. That's actually that's uh, very close to where we are right now. I mean, you could have stopped by, said oh. hello, but uh, I guess next time you're in New York, you were away. We were away. We were, away. I know. I was. Uh, I was. You see, I, I was. Don't put, don't put it on me. I was, I was kayfabing. I was kayfabing. I was kayfabing. Yeah, you're always passing it. You're passing the buck. Yeah, playing the victim. Not my fault, girl. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, by the way, can I just say your cameo videos are incredible, uh, but but there is one problem with them. Why are you charging twenty dollars? I can't imagine how many people are asking you. Twenty dollars is way too cheap. Nah, just do it for fun. I just, like it's it's not like I do the cameos for for the money or anything like that. It's just twenty bucks. So you get what you pay for. Let's just say that some of them, <laughs> like you get what you pay for. Don't I saw like Bruce Buffers the ones there like not knocking them or anything, but those ones like a uh, eight hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah. Like. You got to put a suit on for that. You yes. know what I mean? You got to have a background. You got to get the light. You got to put a suit on. For 20 bucks, I ain't doing that. I'm going to do it on the toilet if I want to do it on the toilet. <laughs> you're, not getting, you're not getting special treatment for 20 bucks. What, it's what? funny though. Like It's just, it's funny. Some people are, some people are just like, oh, roast my mate Sam. And then I'm just like, well, is he, is he, is he short? Is he tall? Is he fat? Is he skinny? You got to give me something. got to give me something to work with. So that'll be my video. I'll just, what are you doing, you muppet? I don't know your mate Sam. Or what am I supposed to make? Oh, you got a real generic name, Sam. I can't. You're not giving me a lot of ammo there. Wait, so you're actually asking for follow-up information? You're like you're interacting with the person who books you? No, that's your. That's what I'm saying. That's your video. How do I how do I roast your? Oh, mate? the video me, is you actually no roasting mate. the guy who asked for the roasting. I would say. I would say half of the ropes get <laughs> just thrown back at the guy that asked for them. That is amazing. Is it, have you gotten any like really weird requests on Cameo? I actually or? haven't. No, I actually haven't. It's it's mainly mainly roasts, 
mainly roast, which can go either way. I've turned a, I've turned a lot of roasts around back on the person that tried to throw them. Um, yeah, like I had another just yesterday, and he's just, oh, roast my mate. He used to be a model, and he's a huge fan of yours. And I was like, look here, dickhead. What? What? How am I going to roast him? Oh, your mate. Oh, you heard you're really good looking, and you're a massive fan of me. How are you? But um, nah, it's good. It's good fun. Mainly it's just fun. happy birthdays as well. That's yeah. a good one. You get, yeah, it's what it's worth. I'm not worth. It's I'm not worth a hundred bucks. Twenty bucks. Nah, 20 bucks. I don't know. I'm about happy that. to do it. How it's many fun. have you done? I bet you've done a ton because it's so cheap. Uh, yeah, hundreds. Yeah, that's the problem. Three, four hundred. Oh my God, three, four hundred. Well, originally, originally this happened because uh, I set it so low, and then I put a put that uh, video up on Instagram. And yes. Then I checked back in, and I had had like a hundred um, oh. cameo requests, and then the cameo people messaged me on Instagram, and they were like, "Hey, uh, you've like got too many requests." And they just went ahead and like put the price of it up. They put oh. it up to like 50 bucks or something. So I was like, hey, you got to get me to give you the okay. Like they must have just thought I couldn't have a hundred video. <laughs> so then I I was like, no, nope. I went back, put it back down to, to 20 bucks. And then I know I did a hundred videos. I think I did like 70, 70 videos in a day. Oh my God. From. Who has the time for that? <laughs> It's fun. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't do it. I'm not doing it for the money or anything like that. I do it because it's fun. All I'm saying is you could probably make a little money doing that. But listen, I give you a lot of props, a lot of credit for uh, for that. Uh, and that video. Oh well, the- yeah, twenty bucks, three hundred, four hundred videos at twenty bucks. You got a you got a bit of money there. Yeah, yeah, I guess uh, the compilation video that you posted was tremendous. Uh, can I ask you, you, you? Um, I want to give you the opportunity to, sh- and 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 please go back um, if you may uh, when we're done. And I just want to let you, like I want you to see the Wi-Fi connection that we've been working with in this interview. I mean, this is like 1996 dial-up internet. I don't know if you've. Uh, can you see me fine? Apologies. Apologies. Okay, can, can you see I me? I can or- see you fine. Mate. It's, um, I mean, it's. Yeah, I, I hear you fine. I mean, you, you like it. We might as well be talking to Arnold I'm Allen. Right right what? No, 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 no. Um, Am I doing the right what? No, I don't even see that. It's, you're just frozen for the most oh. part. But at least the, vo- the 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 voice is okay. Like the the sound is okay. Uh, what's up with your friend and his passport situation? Tell us what's going on here. They are killing me. Uh, so BJ, he before before COVID, he was originally in the. Um, PFL tournament. He was set. He had like his spot book. Put his job. Um, this is my BJ Bland is, is my main training partner. Yeah, he's taken years off my life. I, I, I <laughs> swear it. That's my no. That's my main training partner for all of my camps. That's who I. That's my main body who I spend most of my time chucking around, and we beat each other up. And um, he was originally in the the lineup for the PFL for lightweight. Um, pandemic kicked off. He um, obviously missed out on that. The the roster got shortened to only eight fighters or something like that. So then he didn't make the cut for that. Now they've put him on the challenger series. So obviously you get an impressive victory or something like that. You can possibly earn yourself another spot back in the million dollar tournament. He submitted his visa. It's all approved. It's green light. It's the exact same position that we've found ourselves in, that Brad right. Riddell was in, that I was in myself. When it's all approved, all they have to do is come downstairs and hand it to you. And they're, they're just sitting on it. They're just sitting on it. And they'll wait till after the fight before they come down and process it. They just need to hand the damn thing and he can get on the plane, he can fight a Florida, and he can fight in the Challenger Series. And and is it looking good? Any update? Because I saw that you asked people to tweet. Is, is there any word, or is it just basically like he's waiting by the door to see if this thing's get... I don't know, does it get delivered to him? Does he have to go? I remember you well, going to did. pick it up. We did. Yeah, we, we, we did what made it work. Me, we did what made it work for um, Brad, is that we just 
bombarded their social media accounts until they until they got the job done and they came down. They, they obviously see it. So that's obviously the yeah. most uh, like effective way to make it happen. And when's the deadline? Like when does he need this by in order to make it there in time? I guess Tuesday? Well, he fights, he fights, the, day before, he fights the day before me. Yeah. So I play... Yeah, it's Friday, Friday night. So, well, he can do the what I did. I don't. It doesn't matter about. It. He'll fly. He'll land. He'll land and go sit down the scale. Like that is that is fine. We can we can work with that. We can manage that. Like the guy's been sacrificing for the last fifteen years. You know what I mean? Like he can he can do it. And uh, what's his name again? BJ Bland, BJ Quicksand Bland. Yes, Quicksand Bland. That's right. Um, all right. We. I, well, I hope. I hope the best for him. If not, they could put him on next week's card. No. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay. They do the right thing, and they 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 make it. All right. Um, and so for you, uh, this is going to be a pretty easy. Like, could you tell us, like, how much do you weigh right now? One seventy. One seventy. All right, so we got uh, wait one seventy. That's twenty five. Shit, you're lying, right? No way you weigh one seventy. I was like, shit, one seventy. What does it matter? Like what? What? Like what? Like, is, uh, what is that too personal? You, people, people, is that I too? Could, I could tell you. I could tell you. Yeah, yeah. And people are not going to believe. People are not going to believe me anyway. I would believe you. So it's, it's like you, you told me right now. Can I guess? Can I guess? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say one fifty six. You got a bug on my phone or something like that. <laughs> How do you know this? <laughs> uh, Everyone here has got a bug on my phone. I'm, I'm calling the FBI. Nah, wow. I'm one. I'm 145. Yeah, right. All right. No, see, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. It's too early to be 145. Why would you do that to yourself? But you know what? You look 145. You're so svelte right now. I mean, I think you I look mean, 145. Mean, I can hardly see you. You've been stuck in the same position for the last 25 minutes, but it sort of looks like you're 145. What's up with this mate? He's got the coolest room of all time. He should have lightning quick internet over there. What's going on? What's happening? I'll I want to roast that. this guy. What's his name, this guy, who, whose house you're staying just at? Gone, just gone. In, I think I'm, I'm in the wrong room. I should, I should have changed rooms. Yeah, should have changed rooms. Well, uh, oh, we're done now. You know, we're, we're it's over. Oh, I can hear you. you've got your wrap it up. You've got your wrap it up voice. There's no <laughs> point changing no. now. You got your wrap it up voice on. Yeah, you wouldn't do. Yeah, let me tell you something. You wouldn't do this if this was an Oscar Willis interview. I'll tell you that much. You would have. You would have tested the Wi-Fi before. We're doing it now. Would that's a that's a damn lie. Um, <laughs> We're doing a pub talk. We're doing a pub talk this week for St. Patrick's Day. I oh, think. are you going to drink beer? I do. I'm, so, I'm already 145, so why not? Yeah, why not? All right. How about this? Breaking news, everyone. Frank, can we get the breaking news music? Dan Hooker, already 145. How about that? F four days before the weigh-ins, he's already 145. <laughs> Spread the word. Let the world know. AJ. Hopefully his friend gets his uh, AJ. passport. I'm going to bantam. I'm going to bantam wait. Uh, Br uh, Frank, can we get some music, please? <laughs> Frank, don't leave me hanging. He can't play with that. <laughs> Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, Dan Hooker going to 135. Let everyone know. So he's going to fight Alex Volkanovsky, and then he's going to fight the winner, Piotr Jan versus uh, Aljamain. Because I loved how both you and, you know, I never asked you that. I never asked him that. It, with the, the day you announced that you were going to 145, everyone was like, well, what happens when you have to fight Volkanovsky? I was like, can we let the guy, like, make the cut and fight at least once before we start asking yeah, about what yeah, happens? Yeah, yeah. I mean, come yeah. on, right? You, you have to respect that. I never asked you that. Yeah, let's 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 cross that bridge when we cross that bridge. Yeah, all right. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for the time. I appreciate. I think it's Dan that we talk. I'm not sure. I still haven't confirmed, but it sounds like you. So I'm going to say thank you, Dan, uh, for the time. Good luck this week. Good luck this weekend. Can't wait for it. Appreciate you always coming on. And uh, 
let them have it on set. You're going to be, you're going to be in enemy territory. I hope you're ready for that. They're, they're probably, you know, I know you're beloved, but they're, they're going to go for the guy from England. You know this, right? See. Okay. All right. Uh, Dan, all the best to you, my friend. Yes, well, uh, talk soon. All right. There he is. Dan Hooker. I think there he was. Um, this is like an old school episode of the MMA Hour. Someone bails, bad Wi-Fi. I love this. It keeps us alive. Keeps us on our toes. But man, I can't wait for that fight. Golly, I can't wait for that fight. This is a great fight. By the way, I believe him. I know he kind of said it in jest, but I believe him. 145, I believe that. BJ Bland. Let's get him his uh, his passport. But Dan Hooker versus Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen, uh, you know, one of the more underappreciated fighters in the UFC. As he said, he's won, I think it's eight in a row in the UFC, but 10 overall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten 10 in a row overall, eight in the UFC, undefeated in the UFC. His last fight was April of... The problem is he just fights so, you know, inconsistently. One fight in 21 one fight in 20, two fights in 19, one in 18, one in 17, one in 16, one in 15, one, two, three, four, four and 14, one, two, three, four, four and 13 and two and 12. But that is one of the, uh, the marquee fights on this card. Important fight for both guys for different reasons. Alan trying to take that next step into uh, contender status and uh, Hooker trying to let people know that he is uh, he is a force to be reckoned with at 145 pounds after his run at 155, which was looking good for a while. Um, that is a big one. Now, another big one is going down April 30th. Our last guest of the day will be headlining that card. It was announced last week that it's going to be Rob Font against Marlon Chito Vera. Now, Font had won four in a row up until... December of this past year when he met a guy named Jose Aldo. Fantastic win for Jose Aldo against Rob Font. Uh, he, had, I mean, he had some big wins, Font, going into that fight. A lot of people thought he wins that fight. He gets a title shot, potentially. Sergio Pettis, Ricky Simone, Marlon Moraes, and Cody Garbrandt. That was the four-fight winning streak. I mean, it doesn't get much, much better than that at 135 pounds, especially considering how good Sergio Pettis has looked in Bellator as of late. He is their reigning defending uh, bantamweight champion, but then he met the legend Jose Aldo and uh, it just didn't quite go his way. So that fight uh, was announced. Now Marlon Vera is coming off, as you may recall, that big win over Frankie Edgar in November at Madison Square Garden. He's won his last two in a row. Big knockout win. Remember that that kick? The picture of Edgar's face? Gruesome stuff. Prior to that, he beat Davy Grant. Prior to that, fought Jose Aldo. Didn't go his way. Has the win over Sean O'Malley. Has that controversial loss to Song Yedong. Remember this in the early, early days of the pandemic. The second, was it the second event? I think it was, no, I think it was the third event. Yeah, it was the third event. There was a, there was a Saturday night pay-per-view. Then there was a Wednesday card. That was the Glover Anthony Smith card, and then there was a Saturday night show headlined by Alistair Overeem and Walt Harris. Uh, he fought Song Yedong. It won the fight of the night bonus. I thought he did enough to win that fight, but he lost via unanimous decision. Uh, Yedong obviously looked tremendous on Saturday and uh, has won his last three in a row after that fight, lost to Kyler Phillips, but since then has looked amazing and knocked out Marlon Marais in two minutes and six seconds on Saturday. Um, very impressive stuff. Afterwards, we saw uh, Marlon take off the gloves, but he didn't get a chance to speak. So that's still somewhat up in the air. Um, but Yadong is just 24. And I mean, 135 is just amazing. And I really think that the, I mean, if, if Marlon gets a win here, you got the title fight coming up. We think TJ might be next. You've got Aldo out there. You've got Cruz looking good again. Song called out Cruz. I don't know if you would take that. You got Marab out there. Rob Font is ranked five. Marlon is ranked eighth. After the Frankie fight, I said that, you know, maybe Marlon fights uh, a Dominic, a Marab, 
Corey out there, obviously, coming off that short notice loss to the interim champion, Piotr Jan. 135 is just absolutely loaded in Bellator and in the UFC. Bellator's got their Grand Prix coming up. Amazing division. In Bellator, in the UFC, and in boxing as well. I've talked about this, right? In 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 men's boxing and in women's boxing. Serrano and 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 Taylor is at 135. But 135 in men's boxing is amazing with Lomachenko and Devin Haney. Um, Cambosis. Javante Davis. Teofimo Lopez. It's a great weight class. Let's see. Uh, we got... Uh, Who's I looking for again? Oh, yeah. Oh, he's there? All right. Um, all right, so in a couple of seconds, we're going to be joined by Marlon Vera. Spread the word. And then we'll round out the day with a chat with our old pal, New York Rick, who is in today and is, uh, is challenging his inner bad guy. He's looking very much like Scott Hall, Horrible news, our heart breaks for the original bad guy, Razor Ramon, legend, one of the all-time best. Uh, just uh, some very depressing news. Last night, this morning, saw the post from Kevin Nash, uh, praying for him and his family. Hopefully everyone, uh, I don't know, it doesn't sound too, too good, but uh, I don't know, miracle? Is that possible at this point? I'm not sure. Anyway, when I saw New York Rick, I was like, you're looking a lot like Scott Hall. I wasn't sure if it was intentional, unintentional. We'll address that in a minute. Uh, for now, though, let us go to the Zoom machine and say hello to our final guest of the day. There he is, Marlon Chido Vera. ¿Qué pasa? Amen. Todo bien, mi brother. ¿Tú? What are we drinking? Some uh, kombucha there. You like that stuff? I don't love it. Bro, check this out. I just finished my salmon mm. with a little bit of honey, kimchi, avocado, some kombucha. Tell this motherfuckers alive right here, right now. Okay, respect. You put honey on the salmon? Oh, a little bit. Well, not me and my wife. To yeah. make it like a little crispy and flavory. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. I've never I done that. And tastes good. Oh, I can give you all the recipes. Yeah, but you don't actually, you know, cook the food. Someone else does it for you. Or are you a good cook? I cook. I cook every day. But like today, I, I have an important talk with you ah. so i told bae please can you cook my food so i can talk to hawani wow and she did it. what an honor well thank you to you and to your lovely wife by the way uh i feel like you change your look at, like every few weeks now like now the look is different you're like a chameleon out there every time it's a different look for you what's going on wow that is nice is that new uh it's my last one when did you get that like a couple of weeks ago my my boy from new york bird crack came in town and he gave me some love. That's why I got the hair. Ah, uh, what is that? A scorpion? It's a scorpion with a skull in the middle. I picked it from the book. He he brought his book of of, of tattoos, and I was like, uh, let's go with that one. Action Bronson helped pick it up. So legend. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong there. Now, what does it represent to you? This. It's the representation of art and getting your head tattoo. Kind of. I just like it. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, no, respect. Uh, doesn't that kill though? Like on your skull? Dude, there's no pain in the head. I'm a, bro, I'm a bitch. Every single one, I'm like, please, come on, go fast. Oh, this hurt. Oh, this, my neck is torturing uh, the head. It's, dude, it's, it's, it's weird. Nothing. That was, that was maybe the one that hurt the least? Yes. Wow, that is amazing. And I'm 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 probably what eighty percent cover. Yeah. Are we done? Yeah, it, Are you trying to go for? No, uh, uh, Mister Cartoon is finishing my back after the fight because I, I had an appointment with him in April. So I was like, hey, I got a fight, so we we push it forward. And then I got I got, I got my stomach available, my the other side of my head. Uh, you know, we we'll keep going. We're yeah. strong. How old were you the first one? 29. Oh, wait, first or two? Yeah. Wait, what did you think I was uh, asking? How old are you now? <laughs> yeah. No, no, the first uh, one. My first or two, I was, my daughter was born because it was her, it was her name. So I was probably 
19 or 18. Wow, that wasn't that long ago. No, it was years ago. And then you just I went, loved it, but you just exploded. So since, since I was a kid, I always want to be tied up. Like my dream was to be tied up. I don't know why, I don't know how no one's in my family got tattoos. It was just like something I want to do. Like I was like, I want to be covered in tattoos. Wow. Uh, who who has like the coolest collection in your opinion? Uh like another person? Yeah, yeah. Like who who's uh, like look, do you say like man, that guy just nailed it? Because you know, let's be honest, some of them are a little, you know. Come see, come see. Yeah, most fighters got shit tattoo. I'm like, bro, you're making money. What the fucking art? You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, I don't know, dude. I, I'm honestly, that's a good question. I, 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 if I have to point at somebody, I like myself. I like the way they look. I, I like how I did it. So I don't, I don't think I have bad decisions. Like, she, like some people just went. And do something when they were young and they're like, fuck, why do you put that fucking skull in my face? Yeah. But I don't regret none of my tattoos. So I think I did it right. But fuck, who have cool tattoos? Oh, most of my friends got cool tattoos. You know, Action's got some cool ones. There you go. My head tattoo, he inspired for sure. I, I, the same guy did it actually. How do you feel about face tattoos? They're pretty dumb. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like it just changed too much the way that your face look but you know it's up to the fucking person you know you're free to do whatever the fuck you want but like the head tattoo I like the head tattoo um, my, my back my chest my neck actually before I finished my arms I did my neck and my hands so that tells you something I was going for it right 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 but the face I don't know it's, I think it's just pretty dumb uh, now, actually, I saw, I was um, looking at your Instagram and whatnot. Uh, are you doing some modeling now these days? Oh, you know, a little bit. Wow, looks good. I mean, you, 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 I've told you this. Like, I like your style very much. You've come a long way. You've evolved. You have a very unique look. It's a little sort of, what would you say, like a Californian, like a little bit of a surfer guy? Well, I don't know, but but it's like you're comfortable yeah, in your I skin. Yeah, you nailing, you nailing. Yeah, okay. I feel good with myself, you know, I think... I think that's the most important part about it. Like, I'm not trying to look like somebody or I'm not trying to fit in any environment. I just fucking, you know, I just go with the ride. I like myself. I'm happy with myself. And I'm pretty stuck. I'm, I'm living this life. I'm, 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 I'm a free man. I live good. I surround myself with cool people, with nice people. And I think we're killing it right here. Were you always that way? Comfortable in your skin? Uh, yeah, well, you know, there's times that when you try to make it and you're you're not quite there, you kind of like question yourself. But I told myself the whole ride, the whole journey, like there's no plan B. Like you figured it out. Like I think a lot of people they try, 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 they try hard, and you know we don't know how close we are until we make it. You know, release it, and some people kind of like give up an inch before. They make it. For me, it's just like go all the way or die trying. And, you know, if you die trying, fuck it. At least you try. But if you die without trying, it's like, I think you, you, you will remember the rest of your life. Like, wherever your soul goes, you're going to be like, fuck, if I would just try one more week, I would get the job done. If I wouldn't try a couple more days, I will, I, I will get the chick I really like. If I would try a couple more times, the UFC probably will call me. In anything in, in life, apply the same attitude. Like, if you will stop doing what you're doing, Ariel, like in in a, in a strike for times, your name will be done right now, right? You will be like you wouldn't exist. You keep going. Look right now. You got a, one of the biggest platforms out there. That's right. Same thing, your Rogan. Same thing, your Rogan. Same thing, like all these people that does something like this or something big, they never stop. So Chito Vera will never stop. Never stop. Keep moving forward and never feel sorry for yourself. Never lick your wounds, never, right? Never. No, like, no, like, and we all do good and bad. We all have ups and downs. Fuck it. It's part of it. You know? I love this. Everything is part of it. So you gotta, you gotta embrace everything. You know, I mean, I remember not a while ago, I was coming off two back to back, back losses in Brazil. Back then, if you were to ask people who I am or what I do, 
I was nothing. I was a fucking bacteria. I was like meniscus. But in my head, I told myself, I need to rebound. I need to fix things in my life. I need to take people away from my life that is not helping me grow. And I got to bring people to my life that will help me grow. Back then, no one knew it. I knew it. If I keep trying and I do things better, we'll, we'll, I, will, I, I probably will be sitting down where I am right now. And I am. Because you never know. Nothing is guaranteed in life. But you, you will get the answers one day if you keep trying, if you keep going forward. You know, some people just give up a little earlier. So you actually cut people out of your life that were, that were negative. Inf- That's tough, no? Yeah, it, 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 that, that's the problem. Like, sometimes we are afraid or scared to tell somebody, uh, I, don't, I don't need you anymore. I feel you're dragging me down. And some people call that loyalty, which I'm a loyal person. I, I'm not, I'm not going to stab in the back for no reason. But when somebody's not giving you the best to you or somebody's just not at the level that somebody, some other person is to bring you up, then you just like, you just have to let them know. And most people will tell you, oh, I'm too loyal to let this person go. But then they will stay in that level of anything, of life, of fighting or wherever you are around down just because you, you can't tell them I can't be with you anymore. You got to grow from that. You got to grow from like, you just know who helps you, who helps you. They say around and they, you know, you both grow together. It's not, it's not about me. It's about us. Like we all win, but we all lose. That's not worth it. I'm not, I'm not signing, I'm not signing this life for that. So if somebody's not part of the growth, I won't let them be part of the, we all go and, you know, fuck our life. So might as well just grow some balls and tell people, no, like I just don't need you anymore. And, it takes a lot of ball to say that. Like, how many years took me to become who I am? Like, it's, it's not overnight work. So you got to just, just really ask yourself what's good and what's bad. And, you know, your gut will tell you. You're such a good guy, Cheeto. I consider you a good friend, yet you come to New York. You don't call me. You don't text me. I mean, it's a little rude. <laughs> You're bullshit. I FaceTimed you the first day I was there. I mean, you say, let's go to a basketball game an hour before the game. I mean, come on, man. You you don't think I have things to do? You know, I mean, you can't, you got to give me multiple days notice. I know, but. And probably, how many people probably, how many people you probably asked before you asked me? You definitely asked action before you asked me. Crazy. I swear to God, you're the first one. We're going to put action on on the phone right now. (laughs) Because he was. He was supposed to be there on Saturday with me, but his flight got delayed. But you were my first call, actually. Uh, the AirPods. It's it's a it's a it's a bold choice. You can't actually run with AirPods, right? Uh, in this ear, they don't fit. In this ear, I only use it for interviews. I run with no music. Really? I like to listen to I like to listen to my thoughts. I like to control the flow of what's going in my head. And when I go thirty miles, there's a lot of thoughts. Yo, that is, I, I get anxious at the thought of like my phone dying or my AirPods dying if I go on a run because I think I'm going to be so bored. How do you do it? 13 right. miles? I, uh, yeah, I go, I go, I go, no, absolutely nothing. Just, just my fucking brain processing good stuff and thinking about things I want, thinking about what I want to fix because think about it. When you pass mile eight, mile 10, your board is like, dude, come on, let's go home. Let's go eat a cake, drink of soda. I was like, nah, bitch. No, 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 no. You gotta conquer your inner bit. Bye, baby. So you just have to like, and I like it because I do like to listen to myself because sometimes we don't know. We don't know what's going on up, up here. Yeah. And this is the most important thing. This is the most important thing ever on anything. If your mind is not right, yeah. the body won't go. Have you always done that? Just go run, no music, um, no nothing? Um, I, like, it's not like every single one, but most of them are no music. Damn. Like this morning, I wake up like around 5 a.m. and went for like a, for a, for a, for a short run, just for my low base, before my, 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 my 9 a.m. training. And I went, no music. It was cold, it was dark. And, you know, I just think about the day. I just think about... My training in the morning, my sparring this afternoon, and I was just thinking, like, 
what I want to work on, how I feel, what I need to work, you know, little that, things. And that's very impressive, especially because it's the first day, uh, you know, full day daylight saving. So it was actually 4 a.m., really. Oh, yeah, that's true. You're yeah. right. <laughs> You're right. But even those things, I don't pay attention to those I things. Know. Like, I'm like, uh, if, I, if, I, if I'm thinking like, oh, it's 6 a.m., I'm like, nah, fuck off. It's, it's the, time, the, the time that it is on my phone is the time that it is. Right. Well, if it was just at a different time, that's a matter. I'm talking about, you say, about your, your, like your phone or AirPods when they're not charged. I'm sitting right now on oh, the no. charger because when I call you, my phone was on 2%. Oh, no. My phone is always on 10% and below because I, don't, I prefer when my phone is off because I don't want to be on social media. I don't want to be looking at my phone. I want to be present. I really, so, I, I wish I could have this phone mentality. Off. You don't charge it overnight. You just let it die. I never turn overnight. It dies every day around 8.30 and I just let it die. This doesn't stress you out? Well, my kids are home. My wife is here. There's nothing else I should worry. And then my family is good back home. You know, I talk to them almost every day. So I just let my phone die. And we don't need to be on our phones I all know, day. We don't need. It's a bad it's, and, it's an and don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm part of it too. Sometimes I get in there, but you know, I focus on those things. Like I'm like, okay, let's, let's try to be present. You know, sometimes you're talking to your kids and you got your phone in your hand. You're, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. You're like, oh, what a piece of shit. Put it down. What's up kid? What, what do you need? Okay. Let's go play. Right. I've been in both sides. I've been in the side. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, oh, my dad did it that to me. Why am I doing that? Mm. Because it's a new, it's a new generation. So, might as well do things a little a little better every day, right? Yes. Uh, by the way, when was the last time you were home? 2019. Are you going to go back soon? Um, after this fight, I'm pretty sure going. Man, you're going to get because a hero's welcome. A oh, dude, you got to see that. That's going to be incredible. In 2019, in, 20, in 2019 was well, so I don't even imagine it's going to be right now. But I love it. I love my fucking country, dude. Uh, I see you doing the TV work for UFC. You enjoy that? I love it. And the reason I love it is because, like, if I'm not working, I'm sitting down since the very first fight of the night. Mm. Like, I'm just sitting, even if I don't know that person, I'm just watching. And when I'm calling it live, it's even better because I'm watching right there. Mm. Like, I don't face to the screen, I face to the fight all the time. Oh, wow. You don't look at what's oh, I'm, I'm, the monitor. No, I'm looking at the fight. It's better. You can pick up the energy. You can see who's going up or going down. I love it. I really love it. That's great. I enjoy it. Like I want, I want to go and just see the fight in life. Uh, like I really like. We we've been talking now for 20 minutes. I haven't even brought up your fight, which just goes we're to show. We're talking good stuff. No, I know this is this shows like how tight we are. You know, like we're real bros. Like if I was ever in uh, where you live, Orange County? No, where, where do you live, Venice? Yeah. Orange, orange, yeah, orange County. Yeah, if I was in Orange yeah, County, yeah, you come to like, my house. I'd say, Yo, Cheeto, let's go get some uh, something. I don't know, acai or so. I don't know what you guys eat over there. I cook for you. I cook for you. Some honey, some hu salmon honey. I I can do steaks. I can do tacos. I can do whatever you want. I cook for you. I like to cook for the people. It makes me feel good. I appreciate that. Um, nevertheless, so you have this big. So were you surprised when it was Rob Font? Uh, I think it was about right. Uh, I, I do was waiting for something like that, nothing less, and and it came. I think the UFC did a great job because you know I'm I'm very persistent. So I was asking for a fight since December first. Damn. I was like, hey, uh, you know, let's go. Come on, it's time to fight. It's been already a month. Come on, I'm bored. And they were like, calm down. We we're looking for something big. And they told me like, they they did tell me like, remember. Finding, find, getting you a fight is not hard. We can give you anything, you know, anything. Just, you know, if you're real, I'm like, no, let's, come on. Like, it's about time to do things right. You know, I'm, I want to be a world champion. Like, I don't, I, I didn't came that far just to like, you know, for nothing. So I was like, I get it, but this is who I am. I can change. So I was asking for a fight, January, February, March. And they come like four days ago, like, red fun. I was like, send the contract. Right now, or you signing for me? I told you, I'm signing for me. You're good, um, and I'm I'm happy that I'm stoked about it. It's a great opportunity, 
and it, it feels like my first main event. It feels like when I was wishing to be one day in the UFC and they call me, it feels great. Like I don't, I, I, I hear a, a lot of fighters in the past, like, oh yeah, I got to fight. Like they talk like business as usual and success is not about that. You got to be enthusiastic. You got to still happy about this. You got to be like, like a kid when you get your first fucking candy. I feel that way when they come in for a fight. And now that they come in for my first main event, I'm like, yeah. boy, we're going to, I'm going to let, I'm going to fucking go. I'm going to work. And I'm ready. I've been training hard. I'm healthy. I'm in phenomenal shape. So I don't fucking know what a body looks like because I'm a happy person. I'm so good. Dude. I'm so good. And that doesn't mean I don't train hard or I have easy people around me. Like I work my ass off and I feel good about that. So April 30th, mark the fucking calendar, people. You guys are going to be on the stand and starting up the whole fight. Did you get emotional when you found out it was your first main event? Um, not really. Because I'm, I'm good up here right now. I've been good for a long time. And I got to give credit that to my coach, Jason Porillo. He's very good making sure this is good. So I think that was one of the things that move my my game up pretty well i think he he took me to the next level and and you guys will see that soon i think you guys saw a little bit with the, with frankie but you guys will see even more now that i have two more rounds to work when were you not good when was the last time you weren't good up here um like fuck you know those back to back losses were pretty high on me like I was a little, I, I was a little depressed. I, I thought my career, my career was done. I was like, "Fuck, I can't beat these guys," and I get it. Back then, Lineker was number four. Like the guy was big deal. Yeah. And let's be honest, like I'm, I'm not the type of idiot that says like, "Oh, he don't touch me," but it really don't did much to me. And the third round, I end walking him down and winning the third round. But the, the fight after that, I got a little bit up. So I was like, "Fuck!" Like looks like I can, not, I can, I can win. And I, and back then, I wasn't the person that I am today. So I was like, I was reading a little bit of comments like, oh, fuck, you're done, you suck. I was like, fuck, I do suck. But, you know, I went up here and fixed some things. I was like, you know what? Fuck the noise, fuck the people that, you know, because I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about the people that specific hate or just bring negativity by just having fun. Like, hey, fuck you, you suck. They don't know what's up in your mind. Mm. They don't care. They're not kind. They're probably just having fun. They're laughing. They probably don't mean nothing but, but you don't know that through a fake IG account. So, you know, back then I, I just, you know, I watching, I, I, I wasn't above much and mentally it wasn't that sharp. I was strong. You know, I was able to take it and, and rebuild. I, I went on a good win streak after that, but that's what, that's what happened when you, you talk to yourself and you're like, hey, like, you gotta fix things. You gotta like take care of yourself. You have, you have to do what's right because some things. If you're there, is because either you're doing wrong or somebody's not giving you enough. And both are your fault because you you gotta detect those things. You gotta detect that those things early and fix them. So at the end of the day, I will never give names or, or point fingers because it's me. I gotta take the decision and see what's good and what's bad. And when you think something is good and things are going your way, you got to figure it out. And it's all up to us. By the way, don't be a head case. Did you see Lineker this weekend? Still, uh, still rocking it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he does some, looks like they have no rules with the USADA test out there, but good for him. Oh, okay. (laughs) Uh, Fucking cheater. You think, you think back then too? Mm, Not really. I have, uh, no, I don't know. You in the UFC, it's hard. It's hard to cheat in the UFC, right? But I guess if you got some some money, yeah. you, somebody can tell you what to do. I just believe in hard work. But if you if you're cheating out there, fuck you. I still think you beat Song Yudong. By the way, did you see his fight this week? I do beat him. Yeah. Impressed. He look. He look good. He no. Well, yeah. He good for him. He won. I don't. I I, I don't want to talk shit on Marlon Morales. We have a little conversation after the fights and. I don't celebrate nobody's failure. Nobody's. Ever. I will, you will never see me. Haha, fuck you, you suck. 
unless I don't like you, I will say fuck you if you lose. But it's it's already here or there. The thing with him, he came he came to me like, hey man, uh, whatever we talked shit in the past, I was like, hey, bro, you just lost. I don't. I'm not trying to like pick on you or anything. Like, I I think he's retired, or at least he should. Four stoppage a stoppage in a row. For we have families, dude. Like people don't realize, like a guy like that goes home to 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 his wife and kids, and it's not cool. Like it's not cool being in that position. So I wonder, like, how people can attack somebody like that when he's that down. So when he came to me, he was like, "Hey, man, uh, whatever we said in the past." Keep it up. You're a good friend. I'm like, hey, bro, like, you don't even have to talk to me. Like, you're fine. Like, I'm not trying to pick on you right now. But he passed by where I was working. I shake his hand and I say, I wish you the best, man. Like, keep it up. Like, figure it out. Do something that makes you happy because I'm pretty sure right now he's not happy. I'm talking about son. I believe I beat him. And I think everybody believes I beat him. But I'm fighting number five next. So I don't need to focus about that or anything. I feel like you win this fight April 30th. Then there's one big one, and then potential. And, and you you agree with me, by the way, on that? Like, I feel like this is the one that gets I, you into the door. I feel you. That 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 put me right on the line, and how MMA works, anything can happen. Number one contender can break a finger. I don't know. You know, can get COVID. Sure, oh, sure. There's no COVID anymore. What are you talking? There's about? no more COVID since. Well, since the war started, there's no more Nah, don't COVID. do this, That's Marlon. I like you. I well, like you too. No, much. I'm not trying. To, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to get there, but you know what I'm saying? You no, there's still COVID. more news about it. No, that's crazy. I know. I'm, what are you, I'm Ben Askren right now? By the way, my brother, you know, uh, yeah. Fuck. Oh, did I, well, not compare me with to, to No, that, but with. Ben Askren tweeted this uh, on Friday. Oh, did you know? I'm just making a joke. I know, I know. I'm just making a joke. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, I think I win this fight and I'm right in line. Anything can happen. I agree. I got the next shot, or they give me another big one. You know, to be a champion, you just gotta fight, dude. Uh, if they tell me, like, hey, you wanna fight, I don't know, number two, number one, to see who fight for the belt, I'm like, cool. But first things first, I go in there, kick this guy's ass, and we see what's next. I don't, I don't, I don't like to look ahead, nobody. Who was the one after will, Davy Grant? Who said after the Davy Grant win? This man is going to fight for the belt in the not too distant future. Who said it? Who put his reputation on the you. line? Tell them. Tell them who you. said it. Knows, 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 knows. I think. Oh, that's a good, bro. The knows. The next shirt. Knows, knows. I'm sorry to tell you, we've already done that. Like, that's kind of. Really? Yeah. Okay, whatever. Yeah. I, I can see everything. Okay. But, okay. I, I'm thinking I'm the creator now, but no, I guess I'm not. I called it. I think by yeah, mid next year, by mid next year, it happens. Um, Cause they're a little I'm excited slow. about it. I'm, yeah, well, when you get when you get inside the top five, top ten, you can fight much. Like, right. if you want to fight for the bell, there's no like uh, before besides Fon, it was only Sanhagen or, or, or Merab. Like at the same level of ranking, like okay, you win this fight, you fight for the bell next, and then after that, there's only one fight that makes sense, which is somebody. Between one and two, I'm fight for the bell. So I, I get it that it gets slow, and I don't mind that. I'm just excited, dude. I'm excited for this opportunity. I'm pretty stoked and fuck, dude. All the way from fucking Edward to my first many band feels it's a big deal. Feel like feels like sometimes we feel like things will never happen, but fucking things happens when you just keep pushing. Like doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you fucking do. Just keep trying, and eventually it will happen. And if it doesn't happen, just because you didn't push enough, it really is. It really is. I I figured it out a couple of years. I was like, it's gonna happen. Just keep going. They don't know now, but they will know. Every single champion in the UFC looked ten fights before. Mm. You probably wouldn't know they will become champion until you you see it. And then everybody's like, oh, see that? You gotta see it before the people. And then manifestation will come down to you. Uh, who do you think wins, by the way, Jan or Sterling? That fight, is, it's, in paper, it's pretty easy. Jan. Hmm. Like, you just have way better striking. But that's the thing with MMA. Sometimes you don't need to be Israel Adesanya to win a fight. 
You know, MMA, the, the speed is different. The range is different. You fucking throw three hooks in a row and oops, you won. And the other guy didn't start coming because it's not a sport like, like boxing, kickboxing. Most guys are like perfect technique. Like boxing, box versus boxing is perfect technique. They've been boxing their, their whole life. But you see a guy that comes from your year two and don't give two fucks and just start swinging for the fences. It's hard to read those punches. That's when like you got to spar a little bit of everything. But, you know, everybody can punch in MMA. The glove is small. And there's so many things you can do. You can clinch. You can fight in the fence. So in paper, I do believe Jan kick his ass. Because the starling gets tired every time he's not able to get a hold of you. He's like, his heart rate gets, gets high pretty quick. He gets a little anxious. And Jan is pretty, he's pretty calm in there. I like that because I, I feel I do the same thing. So it's, it's almost like you're chilling in there, trying to fuck somebody, but chilling instead of you just going crazy. Uh, and, and then if, uh, if he, let's say Jan wins, they might do Dillashaw him. Would you fight Dillashaw, by the way? You guys are boys. I know. I, you're the first person to bring this out. I never call him out, and I think I, will, I won't call him out. Is, we're cool. We're, we're actually cool. We're trying in the past and going back to when I lost back to back, he basically opened the doors of his gym for me to like get a different look and just like, you know, kind of like re- redo myself. So I respect that and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So that's what like people ask me before about it. I was like, no, I'm not fighting that guy. Like I like it. So for the record, I'm not doing it. But what if he's champion? And I don't know. Oh, well, that's a different thing. But let's not, I don't like to talk about All it right, because I don't want to do that. Fair enough. I don't, although we can talk about it. No, I get it. It's just, I get it's, it. It's not, it's not comfy you to talk about th- somebody that helped you, help you in the past. I get it. You don't want to just sound like an idiot because most, what most guys will do, oh yeah, fuck the guy, kick his ass. And then when you see him face to face, you probably won't say that because right. again, we are in times like hype is everything. If I go right now and just talk shit, it will, it will go off the roof. Oh, what the fuck? Can you say that? Because right. people want to hear that. I will say that about somebody that I don't know or I don't like. I like Dillash. He's a good guy. Although he did get, you know. Say that again? Well, you made the, you know, you said the thing about Lineker. He did, you know, have the. Yeah, he's a fucking cheater. Yeah. No. Well, at least right now in one of you. What? No. Well, Dillash had a USADA issue too. Yeah, but he came and on public says, and hey guys, I fucked up, I did. Sure. That I respect that. Okay. Like okay. I think that's the best way to get get away with with not not away with doing it, but away with what happened. You're like, hey guys, I fucked up. Yes, I did it. So because most guys are test positive, they just don't say nothing and get away with it. Right. They get a suspension and everything. Make up an excuse. But he came and make a video. He did handle. He had his shoulder surgery. He, he like you know he was shoulder surgery in a chair. He's like, hey guys, I fucked up. That was probably one of the most fucked up things to do. Your arm is all fucked up. You get caught, suspended for a long time. So I, I respect that from him. At least he faced it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I do not respect, like, I would never cheat on my life. So I cannot understand that. Sure. Uh, one last thing before I let you go. UFC is back in London. You have fought there before. You had a crazy fight against Brad Pickett, right? What do you remember from that? Because everyone wanted Brad to win there, right? I mean, it was like emotional. It was a retirement fight. You had to go in there and ruin the night for everyone. What do you remember from that experience? I love London, actually. That is one of the funnest trips I ever had. Um, the Auto Arena, it's beautiful. It's a cool place to fight. The crowd is very aggressive. Like. Yeah. They're they're a little bit like like Brazil, but they say things in English. <laughs> so it's it, it's fun to fight there. Like it's a it's a good looking city, a lot of castles and shit. So it's like a movie, and those fuckers like like fighting up there. Like they go on the stands and just start screaming. It's fun. I w- I would like to fight one day overseas again, but I don't mind Vegas. No, but it'd be nice to. This is going to be at the Apex. Yeah. Quick, you know, Easy. quickie, right. going there, handle business, come back home, chill, keep working, stay hard, stay training, all of those things. Marlon, uh-huh. man, thank you. Uh, you are uh, you're, welcome. you're always a pleasure to talk to. I enjoy the conversations very much. I'm very excited. That's a big night in, in fighting. There's that and also the uh, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano women's boxing match. 
I don't know if you're a fan of that. Yeah. Same night. Well, they're they're no same night. I, and I saw Shakur it. Stevenson. So it was a huge night of fighting. I like that kid. That motherfucker can fight. Yes. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. Also, on top of it all, it's my son's birthday, April 30th. So it's a very special day. I'm going to give him a shout out. <laughs> Thank you, Marlon. All the best to you. Thank you for coming Thank on. You. Good luck in training. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Have a good one. You too. There he is. Marlon Chito Vera. Love talking to Marlon. What a legend and what a fight. What an opportunity. April 30th in Lost Wages, Nevada. Huge fight in the bantamweight division. Imagine if TJ fights for the belt, wins the belt, and then he has to fight. Them. I mean, that would be interesting. We just saw his two teammates fighting, right? Not that long ago. Um, Colby, Jorge, wasn't for the belt, but you get the point. Uh, that is a good fight. Great night. Shakur, Taylor Serrano, Rob Font, Marlon Vera. That's a, that's a multiple TV kind of night. You know what I'm saying? Well, actually, the ESPN one, they'll probably do... They'll probably do, if I'm guessing, Marlon into Shakur. 135. Marlon into Shakur, and then they'll do... Uh, you know, Taylor Serrano will be on his own. So that will be the double TV situation. But I'm guessing Marlon will be a little bit earlier to get into the boxing. That's my guess. I don't know this for a fact. That is my guess. All right. That is uh, our guest for today. Anyone else want to weigh in here? Let's see. No. Dan Hooker's Wi-Fi is still no good. Time now for everyone's uh, third favorite segment of the week. It is time... And now it's time to open up your ears and yes. your minds, MMA fans. Yes. It's time for Rick's Picks. Rick's Picks. Rick's Picks are lots of fun, and his hair is in a bun, because it's, you already know what it is. Rick's Picks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Yes. It's the new craze taking the world by storm. Live from the Vox Studios in beautiful New York City, it's time for Rick's Picks. I mean, come on. Here he is. Hello. I just got a tweet from Dan Hooker. What do you got? I just found out the Wi-Fi shit because the room's bomb-proof. Oh. Well, at least there's a justification, right? I mean, the the room was cool to begin with. Now it's probably cooler. My question is, why is it bomb-proof? I mean, do you do we want answers to that question? Anyway? Yes, I'm, I'm going to write back. <laughs> uh, okay, now the room is even cooler than I thought. The question R read is... Read out everything you're, you're typing. Why is it bomb-proof? Just for the audio listeners, you know? How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Cheers. For what? What are we? What are we cheers? We're having some uh, soup. This is my soup time. Oh, yeah. When you and GC come on, soup time. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try and uh, spit take you again this week. Um, you do look very much like Scott Hall right now. I don't know if you know this. I no, think I was gonna. I was gonna save, save it. I was look. Let's okay. let's get into this. I was okay. gonna save it, but uh, I would be remiss. Look, the mm. po the ponytail mm. is here, right? We see it. Mm -hmm. we see it. Um, I would be remiss if we didn't at least say a word about Scott Hall, Legend. aka Razor Ramon. Um, I want to get this right, so I, I want to say this correctly. On life support after heart attacks following hip surgery. Correct. Per longtime uh, tag team partner Kevin Nash, family is planning to discontinue life support. Now that's per Kevin Nash. Again, you know the details are still kind of coming out as we go. Um, but yeah, tragic situation. Um, wrestling fan, MMA fan pop culture fan, whatever you are, I'm sure you have heard of or seen um, Scott Hall slash Razor Ramon at some point. Um, a staple of of uh, wrestling in the, what is it, 90s, let's say. Um, and yeah, un very unfortunate, tragic situation unfolding. You know who I am, but you don't know yeah. why I'm here. That was legendary <laughs> stuff. He was Razor Ramon, and then he came over to WCW as Scott Hall with Kevin Nash as the outsiders. And they were playing this, 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 it was like this gimmick where they were coming from WWE to take over WCW. And they kept um, teasing that there was a third man, a third man, a third man. Who's the third man? Who's the third man? Who's the third man? And then all of a sudden bash at the beach. I 
think 97 if I'm correct maybe 96 and then Hogan comes out and everyone thinks it's Hogan defending WCW and then he turns on WCW and he hits the leg drop and then he takes the microphone from Mean Gene and he says you are looking at the new world and he actually said organization he messed it up initially (laughs) but then he corrected himself the new world order of wrestling brother and it changed wrestling forever but as Razor Ramon they used to do those vignettes of him like walking around town on the beach, Chico, the bad yeah. guy. The Too music thick. was amazing. He would go like he would come out like that. I mean, he was just yeah. he he oozed charisma, right? Like Ugh. I wasn't even I can't even claim to have been like a huge wrestling fan in that era and even I kind of knew about him just because of the the swag and and uh, he, he oozed was. machismo. He always used to yeah. say that machismo was amazing. For sure. Um and a guy, by the way, who has unfortunately had some downs after pro wrestling. Sure. Actually, I mean, even during towards the end and has overcome and down and overcome, down and overcome and hoping that, you know, he kind of was able to find some peace. Horrible. This yeah. happens too often in wrestling. To steal a line from him, bad times don't last, but bad guys do. The original bad guy, with all due respect to Chael P, he was the original bad guy. I'm sure there's been some borrowing, right, from Chael, uh, from the original bad guy, the uh, the, the, the innovator. I just uh, actually saw this tweet. Uh, what we got? 401 from Dave Meltzer. Scott Hall was taken off life support four hours ago. He is still alive at this writing. Miracles have happened, but this would need to be one of them. Yeah. Let's go, Scotty. Yeah. Sending our wishes to the family. Okay. It's hard to transition. To transition yes. to, this is to why lighter you're the pro material that you are. out of out of this. Um, let's talk. How about we start with? Uh, wow, I sounded very New York when I said that. Let's talk. Let's, let's talk. T a w k. Let's talk. Uh, how about John Lineker? You were just talking about him with uh, Cheeto Vera. Let's talk John Lineker. Cheeto not willing to give him any props. Yeah, I mean, rough, rough. <laughs> um, not willing to, uh, not willing to get there, and and accusations thrown. Um, Cheeto quickly rising uh, atop my rankings of favorite guests, all timer. Yeah, he's one of those, and and there's been a few of these over the years that um, you like. He just we've talked about this that that I've talked about in the past. Tyron Woodley is one of them. Right. Um, there's some that I kind of gravitate toward, not because they're about to say one quote or one thing outlandish that's going to be the one that gets the headline, not because they're the biggest star at the time, um, but just kind of keep it real. Uh, Cheeto Vera uh, keeps it very real, and, and he's one of those that has transcended into that category. Hooker, too, when his Hooker. Wi-Fi is working properly. <laughs> when he's not in the bottom shelter. Right, right. Um, but yes, Cheeto, Cheeto keeps it real. But let's give... On the other side of the coin, let's give some some props and some credit and some respect to John Lineker. Yes. Uh, one of the most exciting fighters on the planet. I don't think I'm going out on too far of a limb to be able to say that. Um, you know what you kind of get with John Lineker. He is going to wade in there and he's going to throw hooks at your body and your head, um, which is a very uh, fan-friendly fighting style, let's call it. Um, and uh, not only was he able to put on an exciting fight, but he's able to capture uh, one championship gold. Um so congratulations to to John Lineker for becoming a champion in a in a very busy uh, weekend of combat sports. That one might have flown flown a little bit under the radar, um, but congrats to John Lineker. Insane card, by the way. I think the last nine fights were finishes. Yeah, and including we saw, your boy, uh, you know Gary Tonin, unfortunately going for the yeah. belt. Came, came up short. Look, it looked like let, you know. Let's call it what it is. It looked like he was deep on that leg lock. It looked like if he had a little more time and and uh, Ton Lee was was a little less prepared. He would have been able to finish that. He finishes that against most uh, fighters, but this is not BJJ, um, and he was exposed. and And I don't mean exposed as in like he wasn't good and he got exposed. I mean literally in the fight itself, he was exposed uh, to to the strikes um, and and put himself in that position by by attempting the leg lock. So um, I'm sure he'll be back. I'm sure he'll learn from it. Uh, but congratulations to to Tan Lee who uh, put on a, a fantastic performance. Um, Tan Lee, uh, a guy with a great backstory as well. Yeah. Um, trains out of, I believe, Louisiana. Yeah. Dustin Poirier. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a contender series guy that they passed up on. Yeah, it, a little bit. I mean, I get, look, the, 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 the bar, the threshold for contender series has never made much sense to me. It feels kind of arbitrary week to week, even season to season. Um, but an exciting style fighter, 
somebody that you would think you'd want to have on the roster. Yes. Um, so I don't I don't quite understand that one. But again, you know, we've seen this before where it's they've passed on people who put on on a great. I show, feel like, like they passed like, a lot more in the early days and not so much. Like now everyone gets in, like a Brendan Lochnane. Brendan Lochnane has that same fight today. He probably gets in, no? Absolutely. Um, in fact, Algio, who was his opponent, has right. gotten in since yes. and, and lost. Um, the the bar has been lowered. The the shift toward contender series fighters filling out the the bottom end of UFC cards has has been in full effect. And so, um, yeah, there 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 are a lot um, a lot of people who had fought previously who look like Kevin Holland didn't make it, and he won a fight. Um, now there was, wow. you know, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't highly regarded by Dana White cause he was talking a little bit too much. And then he got the opportunity to fight, uh, Tiago Santos call big mouth famously. Um, but yeah, there's tons of talent that was passed on, on earlier seasons that now would have easily, uh, cleared that threshold. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, but congrats to John Lineker and congrats to Tom Lee. Um, Tom Brady for... Is Rick's pick this oh, week for are you kidding me? The this most the MMA the freaking... most MMA retirement that wasn't actually an MMA fighter. Um so congratulations to Tom Brady for achieving that. That was uh, a very special level. This of is MMA trolling right here. No, this no, no. Is, ugh, give me a break with this Tom Brady nonsense. <laughs> I mean, come what? on. First of all, Get you know what you know what's the funny thing about it? Get it off your chest. Schefter and Darlington report that he's retired. Then it's like, yep. no, 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 he's no. not retired. Could you yep. imagine, by the way, if they w- if he would have stuck to the not retired? That would have been the biggest egg on their faces of all time. Sure. But yes, he comes out with the retirement. It's like an eight-page swipe. It's like a way too long, but it's an eight-page swipe just about the Bucks, which is bizarre in its own right. No mention of the uh, Pats gets you called out. You love this detail of it, oh, by the way. It, it's like, <laughs> he's one of those classic, like, he's one of the good guys, but he ain't. He ain't one of the good guys. He's an actual cheater. All oh, of wow. a sudden, okay, yeah, okay, we just want. It. We Joe, just Joe's losing his mind no, back here. Listen, Joe's losing his mind. Are we just gonna forget about the whole Deflate Gate nonsense? Are we forget uh, forgetting about spying on the other teams? Are we forgetting about just discarding somehow his cell phone with all the evidence on it? He ain't one of the good guys. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. I he ain't one of the good Joe guys. On camera right now. Yeah. Come on camera. I have no problem. He's an absolute cheater, and I can't believe... Mike Heck, paging Mike Heck. Can we, can we get- I can't believe Patriots fans defend this guy the way they do. Oh, uh, he's surely going to write something about us. It's coming in the next tweet. <laughs> it was never coming. It was a half-ass quote retweet afterwards just to be like, oh, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for all the memories, too. I mean, you only supported me more than any other city has ever supported an athlete for 20 years. And, oh, yeah, I'm going to give you a half ass quote RT. Then he goes away. Then literally like a day after the retirement, already the rumors start that he's coming back. Like, the guy hasn't even retired for 24 hours, and there's rumors that he's coming back. He hasn't even like done anything close to a retirement, probably didn't even file the paperwork, whatever that paperwork may be. He's sure. coming back. Now I have to listen to three more weeks of him. He's going to fulfill a dream. He's going to go play for the Niners. He's going to play for the Niners. Wow, it's such a great story. He's going to screw Jimmy Garoppolo out of another job. All right, that's going to happen. <laughs> then he flies. To Manchester, and we're like, oh yeah, he's meeting with the Glazers to get out of the contract because he's such a good guy. He took a pay cut, blah blah blah. And then we get a, by the way, we get a Sunday afternoon tweet saying that he's back. By the way, stealing the thunder of a real Boston legend, the big ticket himself, Kevin Garnett, in the midst of his retirement ceremony. You noticed that, right? The reunion with Ray, everything. Yeah. Took, took the shine away. I mean, that should have been the moment of the night, right? Yeah. Should it not have been the moment yep, yep, of the night? It, that was a real Boston story. The big three, they finally got the Celtics on top. I was Hatchet cheering buried. up. Yes. That shit buried. Allen's first time back. All yep. three of them are hugging. Big ticket, one of my all-time favorites when he was on the Timberwolves. Didn't like him so much on the Celtics, but not the point. Uh, He gets his jersey retired. You had to do it then, Tom. You couldn't have waited till Monday morning when nothing's going on. When everyone, like, why did you have to do it Sunday night? Who announces news like that on a Sunday night? I'll tell you who. An egomaniac. I'll tell you who. A cheater. I'll tell you who. Someone who deflates balls. And why is that important? Because it's easier to catch them. You bunch of marks. I, th- I think you know it's what? about the throwing, but um, no, it's easier to catch him. Oh yeah, you get you get better grip and catch it. Listen, 
I can't wait. I pray to God that he goes back to the Bucks because there's still some people who believe that he's going to go to the Niners, by the way. They still think that this is the thing. not out of play, right? And I can guarantee you this, Patriots fans are just dying for him to go over there and save that sorry sack franchise. We all know what happened back in January in Orchard Park. We don't need to bring it up. But I pray to God that they're still standing in February. Josh Allen's going to ram that football down his throat once and for all, and it'll be done. Thank you for coming back. I want You know what? I want to thank Tom Brady for coming back because the dream was over of us, capital U.S., going in there and beating the 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 Tom Brady-led Bucks in the Super Bowl. Thank you for doing this so that we finally get to realize that dream. So I'm actually happy about this, for the record. what I mean, just tremendous. You you really brought it for Screw that Screw that segment. guy. Thank, thank Screw you for that, that guy. And by the way... And, and for all those reasons, though, you can admit that this is the most MMA retirement ever, yes? Like, this is MMA retirement to it. It's team. actually worse. No one sure. does it. Like, after three weeks... Who does it after three weeks? I mean, we've seen less. Yeah, Chris Curtis retired retired twice in one night. I mean, it's it is the it is the prototypical. He got. MMA I mean, the poor guy. Let, let us not say yeah, Chris no. Curtis's name in the oh, same breath as Tom. He's Brady a legend came. for it. He's a, wow. One's a okay. winner. One's a loser. All right. <laughs> one's I have a no winner. problem saying. Yeah, Tom Brady Chris not Curtis. a winner. Tom Tom Brady not a winner. Winner. Tom Brady loser. Oh wow. Capital L. This is this is special. I must say this this is a special. And by the way, you would think I would love Tom Brady. Tom Brady, former draft pick of the Montreal Expos. Yeah, but he. I mean, his his. He spurned us, Patriots. Yes, he turned his back on us the same way he turned his back on the great city of Boston, who I have a lot of love and admiration yeah. for, and the same way he's going to try to finagle his way wait, out wait. of Tampa. You have a lot of love and admiration. I do. You just buried them and talked about how the Bills are going to put them in the grave. Well, I mean, that's the t- that's the franchise. The actual city is a lovely place to oh, okay. visit. Okay, got it, got it, got I it. I enjoy visiting Hate the city. everybody there and their sports teams, but the nah, city itself. I mean, good. The, I've had great memories in Boston, you know, road trips and whatnot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't like, I, I will be honest, I don't like any of their teams. Don't like the Red Sox, don't like the Bruins, don't like the Celtics. Fair enough, like the Patriots. fair enough. I mean, they're kind of the rivals of all of my favorite teams in any way, in any event. Uh, no love for Tom Brady, and I think that was a whack move. By the way, why, like, how much could have possibly changed? Do you dislike your family that much that you need to, oh you know, boy. I mean. Go here, huh? I mean, uh, I say. listen, Ryan Clark said it first, okay? Got like 50,000 retweets. So blame RC. Blame real casual. Oh, God. <laughs> Are we, you know what? I'm just going to let you go. I might just. Blame that dude. Let you, let you just riff. Mr. Sensitivity. Oh, boy. He's going to come um, after me now. All right, now low, I'm going to. Low gonna, key threaten me. I'm going to go away from this. I'm going to take right, this sorry, back sorry. here. All right, sorry, sorry. Um, you, can't t- you can't bring up Tom Brady at this hour and 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 not trigger me, okay? <laughs> maybe I knew what I was doing. Maybe I didn't. Yeah. Um, okay. We'll, we'll talk. How about how about a, what could be a retirement? What could be a move away from the USC? We don't know yet. But I think I, think I want to carve out a little bit of space to, to give some uh, much-deserved credit and kudos to Marlon Marais. Um, a guy who... Um, spent some of his better years in WSOF and then came over to the UFC and, and looked like he was, um, you know, bound for a title. In fact, fought Henry Cejudo in that title fight. Came up short, but not for lack of effort. If if anybody less tough than Henry Cejudo was in that fight, that's probably um, a world championship wrapped around Marlon's waist. Um, now on a skid, it, it, you know, I don't think he won that Jose, uh, Jose Aldo fight. Uh, Jose Aldo fight? Why am I saying Jose all of a sudden? Mm-hmm. Uh, that Jose Aldo fight, which would make it six straight uh, losses if if you do that um on on the downside clearly um i think the skills are still there but but the the defensive um prowess is, is not and he, he can't seem to withstand um the attacks of of his opponents um but deserves um some time in the sun i think if uh if people are only tuning in now they're not going to know how how good marlon Moraes was in his prime uh both offensively and defensively one of the the real like implementers of those leg kicks that are now so famous um, really stuck to that and another WSF stable mate Justin Gaethje as well um, but at that time one of the most devastating leg kickers so uh, shout out to Marlon Marais uh, took off his gloves in the cage we now don't know what that means obviously he didn't get a chance to speak we don't know if that's retiring we don't know if that's just you know feeling like frustration or, or feeling like he's on his way out um, but I think uh, Marlon Marais is somebody who uh who did a lot of good in, in the world of MMA and was a, a very high uh, level fighter uh, who hasn't been able to show it recently. So shout out, shout out to that guy, um, legend, a, a legit, a legit juggernaut in his prime. True good guy, and a, and a good dude. Yeah, I think that's Great important dude. to note as well. 
fortunately haven't talked to him in a bit, but uh, love him dearly. Yeah. And uh, had a great run. You know, I was talking to uh, GC about this. This is probably the time of the day when he was freaking out about potentially losing his animation and wasn't listening to me at all. However, <laughs> he had an amazing run and then left Mark Henry in uh, New Jersey and moved to Florida. Now, sometimes these things are coincidental, it, right? It can yeah. coincide, but like there is a, a, like a clear line of when he was with Henry and the success that he had and when he left Henry and the lack of success that he unfortunately suffered from. For sure. I mean, I'm I'm going to hope and 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 say, you know, hopefully more coincidence than that. And and look, if if that's what it was and sometimes this happens, go back and and see if you can have some success. I, if I had to guess, do you think Marlon Marais is is done? My guess is no. My guess is we see him elsewhere Well, did you see you saw him on the broadcast, right? He was taking yeah, off take, his take gloves. Off the gloves yeah. yeah. But he never but said again, anything. He didn't say he didn't say what yeah. that meant. And and we've he seen hasn't. Well, well they didn't ask him on 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 the broadcast. He, he could have. He didn't been. get that moment. Yep. He didn't get that moment. You know, it's interesting because uh, I was watching to this point, to a degree. I was watching. Um, By the way, j- just quickly. Yeah. I I, I want I want to let you have that, but you know, Molly McCann took off her gloves in in, true. in, yeah, in yeah. the cage once, and it yeah. was just a tribute to her father. Like this happens. That's we true. don't know what that means, but uh, it's sorry. a fair point. No, no, no. It's a it's a very fair point. Um, Khalil Roundtree in his post-fight press conference. Yeah. I don't even know if you call those press conferences. I guess Scrums, press, conference, press yeah, conference, yeah. He was talking about how it upsets him that the losing fighter doesn't get to go back and talk. And yeah. I think that's a really interesting point. Now, there are times when someone's severely hurt, concussed, whatever, they shouldn't probably talk, right? But I actually think that the media, like I'll say like some of the, I don't want to say best, but some of the most fascinating interviews that I've ever had have been with, losing fighters, right? Sure. It's just a whole different perspective. Uh, I would say like for myself, like I'm actually mm, hesitant and uh, I don't want to say afraid, but like I don't want to bother someone. Like I yeah, I don't actually think it's the media saying we don't want to talk to you because you lost. I actually think for the most part, we don't want to bother you because you lost. Yeah. So I think that, you know, I think the media deserves a break on that one. Um, but in a case of Marlon, I wonder if he would have said, uh, sure. if he was retiring, like, hey, can I go talk so I can say this to people because he didn't get an opportunity to do that. It was very clear. He's like right in the shot when he was taking him off. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I'm sure we will find out, obviously. We will mm. know what, what's next and Marlon will come out. But I, I, you know, I understand the perspective that, that you're saying, like, Often these are the better interviews, but not everybody wants to do that in their lowest moment, right? Not right, everybody yeah. wants to to have that microphone in their face and say something. So I think it's I think it's probably on the fighter to potentially bring that to light, right? Like if Marlon felt like I need to say something, he can make that clear, and and I think that that has happened. Um, I also think the stakes of it, right, in the main event, that's kind of a different story than than a fight lower on the card. Um, but yeah, certainly I, it would. <laughs> I would want to know. I certainly do now. On on this Monday, want to know what you know he was taking the gloves off for. Was it frustration? Was it was it actually uh, you know a, a sign of something else? Um, but I am sure we will find eventually. But either way, I think Marlon Marais, a, a guy um, who in his prime was was one of the best, uh, deserves you know so, some recognition. By the way, what about last night when I uh, texted you? Hey, is uh, Khalil on Instagram? And you said no. Well, that means we were both blocked. Well, you were probably well, looked at MMA fighting. Yeah. Did you check as yourself? I did not. MMA fighting is what I was logging into. Crazy. Is that yeah, a new like, thing where everyone, because like uh, I heard that there was a thing on Twitter where you can like mass block people. Hmm. Someone told me that Gina Carano did that because I was all sad that she blocked me. But I guess you could prob- apparently you prob- can, yeah, you there's can block settings. people who are like connected to something. Like you yeah, put a I think that's probably or something. it. You know. could block people who are like either not following you or you're not following in like groups like that, I imagine. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and he came on and explained it. I'm, uh, like you, you I'm surprised. And I think maybe this was part of the context I was thinking. I would, I was surprised then he would be coming on to the show. Yeah. If that was the case, right? Like if you are blocked, uh, typically your beefs take a little bit more massaging to get people, uh, to come on the show. Um, as we've seen in some recent runs, right? Like it wasn't, uh, it wasn't one DM to Bobby Green, and all of a sudden he was on the right, show, right. No, know? this was uh, fairly easy. Um, but yes, blocked, still all blocked. Us, by all way. of us blocked. Yeah, same. Yeah. I, I, I have a feeling that one's not going to be lifted. I have wow. a feeling uh, that one's going to stand. Look, and it seemed 
I will say the justification that that he provided on the show seemed less personal and more for his own yeah, yeah. habits. You know, it was not necessarily like I want I don't want you to um know what's going on with me. More I don't want to see what's going on with you from that perspective, like the MMA sphere. Um and and that's well within his right, you know? I think it's that that type of thing though. I still got love for him. I'm not going to take it personally. I mean, great interview on the show today, right? Yeah, he's the man. He is the man. And, by the way, all that other stuff aside, that was a tremendous win. Only one I got right on Saturday. And that kick was amazing. And his reaction to Connor tweeting about him was super cool because some people will, you know, now it's cool to hate on Connor. For sure. You know what I mean? Like, he was, like, genuinely taken aback. Yeah. It meant something to him that Connor McGregor was talking about him. Um, yeah, when, when Khalil Roundtree is engaged and firing on all cylinders and letting his attacks fly, that dude's a problem. That dude is a problem for people. Um, when he's a little more timid, a little more passive and, and people are able to get in on him, that's, you know, that's potentially where, where he's, uh, fallen short in the past, but offensively when he's rolling and it's going downhill for him, that's, that's a problem for people. Um, he is a very uh, technical, skilled, creative, powerful striker. So, uh, <laughs> Carl, you know, Carl Roberson's a good fighter. I, I I rate him pretty highly. In fact, like this dude has, he jumped into the kickboxing world with very little experience and like achieved at a decently high level, like right away. I'm talking about Roberson. Mm-hmm. Um, I respect that dude's stand up. Um, when Khalil Roundtree found an opening that was. Uh, Scary, quite frankly, like that level of of speed and power was, was scary. Precision as well, yeah. As as he alluded to with right. the Connor um, reference. Okay, that's all I got. That's it, huh? No clear round tree. I mean, I I would have, but I mean, it, it's getting a little bit stale to pick the guys and girls who are on the every show every time. single time. Yeah. Uh, you seem to you're reading my mind. You've got your finger no, on mean, the pulse. Like Whatever the we want to call it, yeah. Um, but it's hard. I'm trying. I'm trying to mine. Look, you know, I give you Tom Brady. I give you the gems like that. That's right. That's you right. Can't, <laughs> you can't criticize. Me. You can't criticize me uh, for not having the uh, the guy who was just on the, the clock show. over here. S- still says three thirty. It's uh, oh, so it's a, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you for that. I've been waiting. Let's keep for going. That. Let's let's just... no. But I keep looking. And I'm like, oh, it's only three thirty. This is great. Um, but in reality, it's actually four thirty. London. You go to London? No. No, uh, but I will be anxiously awaiting that card. I am excited. I am excited. What are you most you? excited about? Am I going uh, to London? No, I'm not. What's the? Th- uh? With all due respect to Patty's fight, which I think uh, we all want to kind of see Patty back in there. Yeah, but it's- I'm I'm really excited about Aspinall and and uh, Volkov. I I believe uh, Aspinall is the next guy. I really do at heavyweight. Um, and I want to see, and I think Volkov is that measuring stick. I think Volkov is very much the guy uh, who can either derail this or or put him on that next level. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. I, I'm a big believer in Tom Aspinall. I think that guy is the truth. So uh, I want to find out if I'm right or wrong. Um, and I think a lot of people are like that. I know Bisping, you know, on the show said that. So yeah, I want to see it. Shout out to Michael Bisping for doing the Lord's work. Um, yes promoting the sport of mixed martial arts. But yes, I agree with that. I, you know, I love the Hangman uh, Arnold Allen fight. Two of your favorites right there. Two, two of my absolute favorites. I mean, Gunnar Nelson fighting again is like, what? Uh, like, I keep having <laughs> to remind myself that this is actually happening. He's back. Because the last time we saw him was, what, three years ago? When was the last time we saw him? No, it was, uh, it, uh, yeah, it was three years ago. Yeah. Well, three years that. in September. Three years in September was, was the last time. Yeah. That's insane. Um Paul Craig is always fun. And Jack Shore versus Tamor Valiev is a gigantic one. This Ollie is McCann. A... Mohamed Mokhaev. I mean, that's a huge, huge... I mean, this is a big-time debut. We've been talking about him forever. Corey McKenna, great character. Faber loves her. Nathaniel Wood, great ca- Jai Herbert against Ilya Taporia. That's a great Love fight. That. Yeah. Ilya's a big favorite, but I like that fight a lot. 1 p.m. Eastern, it begins... Uh, and 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 by the way, for the next two weeks, I know this because of the whole clock thing. UK is only four hours ahead. They're Except usually five. five hours ahead, but they're four hours until they change their clocks. I think in two weeks. So, for anyone wondering, PSA. I don't know, I don't know how that would affect you. I mean, it's the time wherever you are, but like 
just so you know, for now, it's for I made the mistake with Dan Hooker because I booked him at seven UK time thinking it's two o'clock. Uh. And then I realized, oh man, I told him the wrong time. Seven is actually three. Worked out because we got more time with Khalil. Yes. Would have worked out perfectly. More time with Khalil, right up to page, go to page, but it didn't work out. It didn't work out as I was planning. I was looking at the clock. I was like, oh, this is going to work out perfectly. Hope she feels better. Yeah, hope she feels better. Um, there was something, I had some sort of bone to pick with. Wasn't there something with you? Oh, yeah. What, what do you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, in my mind, I was like, bone to pick. Shall we address Talk the elephant you. in the room? I'm not aware what you're referring to, but if if you have something, please. GC, do you want to handle this or should I handle it? Uh, yeah, you can handle it. I don't think there's much to handle. I mean, I mean, it came out Saturday after months of sitting next to each other, working together that like you weren't following. Oh no, no. See, oh, I get now. I get why you said just, you had a bone, but it was it was a misunderstanding. You see. Um, Here he comes with these yeah, insane, go. outlandish Thank conspiracy you. theories. Thank what, you, what, what, for for those out there, what you're referring to, I, I believe, is that um, it appeared believe, yes. it, it it appeared as if I had only followed Connor GC, this yeah. wonderful man uh, sitting to my right, um, on Saturday. Mm. Could we get a split screen, or is it too hard to do that? No, I just want to see why both. You, oh. Connor, why don't you see, <laughs> I want to slide in over here? Um, I just want to know if he's believing this story. No, okay. Well, you know, I mean, not to you know let people in, but maybe we, you know, maybe we've discussed it. Maybe we haven't. Maybe no, no. I, I would have hoped you didn't discuss it. It's better to discuss no, it fresh you know and live on the wasn't, show. These are the first words I've said to there, him the entire. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Good. Way, way to go, was, Yoon. There okay. wasn't anything to discuss because you know, as as I'll lay out the case here, it's it's very understandable oh, what kind of great. happened. I so, wish I had popcorn right now. Um, it appeared as if I only followed Connor on Saturday. Now, yes. uh, you know, <laughs> it went in actuality. What what really happened? Uh, if you're if you're somebody who uses Twitter a lot, like like myself, you know, my mm -hmm. job is in social media. Um, you'll know that every once in a while, there's a bit of a a purge. People who you've previously followed get unfollowed. It happens. Mm -hmm. It's very rare, but it happens. You you might not notice until you look at somebody's profile or say, hey, why haven't I uh, seen this person's tweet in a while? Um, I have followed Connor previously, but on Saturday, I was looking for Connor's picks, the best picks in the business, the ones you want to look for. Mm -hmm. um, and I and I saw, hey, wait a minute. I've unfollowed Connor. I can't believe this. I must rectify the situation immediately. Uh, so that's what I did. I, I pressed follow. Um, unbeknownst to me, Connor would also be under the impression uh, that I hadn't been following him previously, at which point he aired. Did you get a notification? Like, how did you find out? Yeah, it went to my notifications and it said, uh, at New York Rick, wow. and it started following me. Yeah, I mean, it was a slap How did in the you face. feel? How did you feel? I mean, he can't, do you hear these conspiracy things? He's just I mean, talking in circles. I don't even yeah. know what no, he's I mean, talking I, about. I, I, think I mean, I Ariel, has, Ariel has never, you know, unfollowed me. No. Mysterious Frank, you know. It's never. Never, never heard of, of this purge. What is this purge these that he's talking about? These unfollow bugs. I don't know. I don't yeah. know who uses these. I mean, here's here's the God's honest truth. <laughs> <laughs> now wait this is so all we've wanted the entire time. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, so no, wait, no the last 10 it's, minutes it's an addition to it it's, a, okay. it's an addendum you can choose to believe me or not <laughs> truth be told uh, that follow from me uh, is significant it wow. means something and I appreciate I appreciate that your feelings were hurt by me not following you don't worry I'm a day one I've been following um, from that first tweet I sent I sent Connor uh, saying great job. I love this betting segment. Even before we were sitting shoulder to shoulder, a uh, big fan, big fan of Connor. Is this accurate? Have, wouldn't have a, a bad word to say about him. Um, followed him then again, Twitter, you right? Know, the unfollow bug it's, hit. it's a glitch that, oh, that happens. So do you remember Connor the first time he followed you? Like, no. can you confirm? You don't even remember. Wow. No. Okay. I think I'd remember that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's He's the got the thing. check mark. It stands out a it little bit. It stands out. Hey, you know what? I want to believe what he's saying right I'll now. Have I really my, do. I'll have my character assassinated because I love Connor that much. Listen, he's that he, much of my friend. He comes on the air saying all this. He seems like a great guy, but behind Never the been. scenes, I'm going to break down. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to break down the fourth wall here. Oh, this is great. Alex goes the 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 famous snack place. He brings back two teas, one green, one jasmine. Yeah. He gives me the green as I requested. He gives Rick the jasmine. 
and just with that, with no asking, no nothing, Rick swipes the green and what? gives me the jasmine. <laughs> so, yeah, what? You know, he's a real life heel. He's succumbed to bullying at this uh, point. I mean, this he's is a real this heel. Is, it's it's workplace, you know, bullying. You know, ESPN. There, there's this. Them. There's this glitch with the with the T's, right? There's this, bug, the there's this bug with the T's where. Uh, no, that one was was just a little bit of uh, ho- hope was, you don't miss it. I, I really want this. It was this um, third green tea of the day. How much green tea can one guy drink? drink? I am drinking a lot of green tea back here. I've taken quite a few bathroom breaks. Um, but to get serious for a second, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> only only love uh, for Connor. I don't know if um, I believe that. If I'm being honest, you don't you don't have to. I'll be honest. I do don't believe care. it, Connor. I don't care either All way. Right. I'm gonna take the higher road and believe him here. You know, I'm not going to stoop down to his That's, conspiracy theory level because he he did follow me back on Instagram. You know, right, right away, following right back. Oh, right away! I thought you meant on Saturday too. No, 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 no. See, I don't think Instagram we'd be in doesn't have right that bug. That Instagram happened. doesn't have that bug. It's a known bug. You can look it up. You look if you look it up and find out that I'm telling the truth. Good on you. How can I find if out you that you're telling the truth? If I'm going to Google, did New York Rick unfollow? No, you can look up that this is a known issue, or you cannot. And what but, is it? What is but, the issue? I don't they think the question is if he unfollowed me. I'll tell I, you. I don't think he ever did. I'll tell you. Well, oh, that, okay. Now that's a fascinating thing. So I was going to ask you if you think you can recall uh, an issue that led to the unfollow. You just don't think he ever bothered to follow you to begin with. Correct. Well, isn't that the whole thing? No, I isn't thought I, I thought maybe that you unfollowed him out of spite. Oh, if that was the real case. No, nah, come on. I think that would hurt that, more. That's honestly. silly. That's <laughs> what? what? Like Maybe you were, I don't know, you were starting to feel like, you know, you didn't like him, you didn't like his no. work on the show. Listen, again, I'll go, I'll, I'll say it again. Believe me, don't believe me. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't change my day. It's still Mr. It's still Monday See, afternoon. He I'm still here. Care. I don't care. I don't care. Wow, believe me or not. Even Mr. To Monday follow. afternoon this year. I'll tell you, so... You you asked about the actual uh, breakdown of it. I'll, I'll tell you. Um, yeah. I'm sure this is this is enthralling for the listeners. The I'm reason I know about this is because, as I was saying, you know, my job, my living is made on social media. What will happen a lot of the time, and at my previous job, and sometimes I'll notice it at this job as well. We follow a lot of fighters. Yes, like mm-hmm. that's that's kind of what we do. Yeah. Every once in a while, there's somebody who we know we're following for years at the point, um, and every once in a while we notice, oh, they've been unfollowed. And refollow. So I've seen this in action uh, quite a few times. It, it happens, um, and that's and that's how I know. So one of the things I was thinking was like, oh, I, I want to look up Connor's picks this Saturday afternoon, morning. I forget when it was. Um, I was like, hey, I haven't seen his his uh, tweets on my timeline in quite a while. Looked at it, noticed he was he was unfollowed, and and followed him right back. So um, that's the situation. Uh, believe or don't believe. Either way. Um, I will I will ride for Connor uh, until the wheels okay. fall off. He's my guy. This is good. I, I'm reading an article right now. Losing followers. Twitter hit by unfollow bug. It happens. Wow. <laughs> it's a real thing. My question is, who's going to stab who in the back first? Will it be nah. Till stabbing Hamza? Hamza stabbing Till? Or is it going to be... Wait, so first break? of all, who's Hamza? Oh, oh, you're saying between the pair? Between yeah, the yeah, yeah. Or is it you? Uh, I think we'll outlast Hamza and, and Darren, if I had to guess. I wonder who's going to stab. Someone's going to stab someone in the back in that pairing. But is it going to be Hamza securing his place as the ultimate heel, it's gonna stabbing the Till's going to Till's going to stab Hamza, and Hamza's going to be the baby face. Yeah, because Hamza doesn't need wow. Till in this scenario, right? Hamza's just going to keep climbing, keep climbing, keep climbing. It only gets spicy because Till is going to need at some point to stab Hamza to kind of get that to get that rub and, and make that happen. Uh, the same way, look, Jorge was the bigger star, right? Jorge Jorge didn't right. need Colby Covington. He could just keep going, going, going. At a certain point, it behooved Colby Covington uh, to, to make that turn on Jorge when Jorge became the biggest fight for him. It will be Till, if anybody. I'm not trying to cast aspersions on uh, on Darren Till. Sure. Um, but look, I mean, I love this two box. We could just keep this, this is going. A, I like this. Do this for, for the We could combine the segments. Do like a remix. Uh, by the way, final word on this from uh, Lewis, our good friend Lewis Gilmore. No revision. New York Rick sticking with the dog ate my followers line. I mean, unbelievable. But again, to Lewis and all the other um, jabrones out there, all the other wow. uh, uninformed wow. um, peons, um, 
believe, believe or don't <laughs> be- believe or don't believe, it really doesn't uh, matter uh, to the to the Monday afternoon Messiah. It really doesn't. You don't you don't matter to, uh, to steal a line from. from yeah, from, I think uh, we figured it out. Yeah, the people we figured truth. it out. Anybody that refers to themselves as you know the Monday afternoon <laughs> Messiah, I, mean, I might, I might, might turn. I might place. turn today. It might not even yeah. take that long. I might listen turn today. I, I, on Saturday. I thought the biggest news story in terms of like Twitter and this crazy sport was Connor finally acknowledging Jake Paul on Twitter, and then by Saturday sure. night, the biggest story was uh, this. Sure you're enough, not yeah. following. you not following, unfollowing, still not quite sure, but so, you know, tried to right slide it by. Pick tried one. S- no, see, if I tried to slide it by, see, this is the thing. This is where the all of it falls apart, and, and you guys are not thinking at the level that you need to be thinking. If I, w- if I was concerned about that, why would I follow? I would just stay unfollowed. No, you can't do I that. Would, yeah, I would not alert. I would not alert somebody if I was trying to avoid detection. Obviously, so you guys are you guys are down here playing checkers. Do you guys are you guys are down here. You just gotta. I'm up here. You gotta this follow is, and just hope I'm for at. the best. You gotta refollow nah, see, and hope for the best. May, yeah, maybe you. Snuck it in. Maybe yeah. snuck you. It in. He maybe snuck it in. Then. Saturday yep. fights going on. Yeah, too much action. A lot of tweets. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. This shows. This shows the levels to the game. I mean, that was he knew exactly what he was doing. Now that I think about it, yeah. I 100 percent believe that it happened. I'm just wondering if it's. Did he not follow at all initially, or was there a following, unfollowing, refollow? That's no. the part I can't quite. The world may never know. Again, pick one. Decide. Decide for yourself. Choose it. Uh, live your. I've figured your truth, it out yet. Live your reality. Um, neither of them. Neither of those two incorrect outcomes matters much. We proceed with guy. caution around Mr. Monday afternoon right. from now yeah. on. The Messiah. The, control the, the Monday afternoon less, Messiah uh, has has. Control rooms are a little bit, uh, you know, we trust people more on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Considerably different vibe, right? I mean, (laughs) you don't, you don't don't let your hair down. We don't don't, don't even want to. You don't get this on, on Wednesdays. No. We need to make sure his card doesn't work on Wednesdays. Right. Like that, (laughs) that video, the dude from the Jets. The Jets, yeah. Showing up. Great. Who's that guy? I forget. Jamal Adams. Is it Jamal Adams? I think it is, yeah. When the card doesn't work? Fantastic. Um, Well, I'm glad we sort of cleared this up. I don't know if we've actually cleared up anything, but uh, I'm glad that we at least addressed it. There was something on my mind. I was like, I'm forgetting to mention something. I'm forgetting. And then, thank God I remembered at the last second. So We would have been sunk without it. Yeah. All right, gents. This has been, I mean, this is nice. I I just just want to like revel in this two shot. This is a nice thing right here. We did this two shot for the award show. Yeah, I know. new. I know, but it's been like three months since then. Yeah, Two you got months. rid of the uh, you got rid of the strand on the computer. Got rid of the strand. I know the yeah, are happy. Yeah, yeah. Could we get a shot of the computer here? Uh, I cut it and I added the flag of Ukraine, Slava Ukraine, uh, to everyone out there. All right, thank you very much, guys. Much love. Appreciate you, and thank you to all the fans. Thank you to everyone who tuned in. But it's time to go. I've had enough of all of you. It's only 351. It's super early. <laughs> I think Frank's going to wait for me to say, you came my music because last time there was this whole awkward thing like, did you want it to end? Did you not want it to end? Yes, I want it to end. Frank, you can hit my music. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Frank, you can hit my music. There it is. Hola, mana, mana. Another fun day, another fun show in the books, my friends. Of course, back on Wednesday, same time and place. Another fun show then, planned for all of you. The final stop before we go to London. Of course, I won't be going, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Not, you know, in a literal sense, in a figurative sense. London calling, na 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 I don't really know the words to that song other than London calling. Um, but it's going to be a scene. It's going to be an absolute scene, my friends. Saturday at the O2. Congratulations to all the big winners from this past week. Uh, since we last spoke, a ton of fights, like I said, Invicta and PFL and one. That one card was great. Um, didn't talk a ton about Bellator, but I got to say, I mean, that main event, if you missed it, Mads Burnell and Adam Borix, that was a great main event as well. St. Louis. Great card, Phil Davis with the victory. Um, so there was a lot to like. And again, I can't, I mean, tr- if you're not doing anything tonight, if you're looking for something to do to just 
put your feet up and watch watch that Mike uh, Mick Conlon fight Michael Conlon Mick Conlon fight against um, Lee Wood fantastic stuff thank you very much to all the guests today appreciate you all very much uh, Dan Hooker Khalil Roundtree Marlon Vera Cody Law love you guys thanks for stopping by get well soon Paige Van Zandt thank you to the crew as well back on Wednesday same time and place until then I say peace I'm out of here